begin. Hours on the pond lead to a dream of a state high school title. Staking claim is one of Minnesota's best. To be the best meant a chance to skate for the maroon and gold. Minnesota's pride on ice. But for the last seven years, the hockey dream ended there. Until now, the puck drops tonight. Welcome back to the NHL, Minnesota. We are in balmy Southern California where palm trees are the backdrop to the pond of Anaheim. And tonight the Minnesota Wild is getting set to skate into history. Good evening and welcome to Anaheim. In a matter of minutes, we will witness a live birth the birth of a hockey franchise as the Minnesota Wild will be born before our very eyes as they take on the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Hi everyone, I'm Eric Nelson, joined by Tom Reed, a member of this Wild broadcast team and play-by-play -play man Mike Goldberg, and what a night it will be as we watch history. You know, I watched that video at the beginning of our show tonight, and I think back to the homework that I've done the last few days, Tommy. The first game ever played organized hockey in the state of Minnesota, 1895. It's been 2,675 days since the North Stars left town, and you know what? They're gone, and the Wild are finally here. Well, the one thing, Mike, I was not there in 1895 when they played that first game, but I feel like I was. But this is a great opportunity right now. There's no question that Minnesota is ready for this. They've been ready for a long time, and we're going to see it unfold here tonight. And they've got a man in control, head coach Jacques Lemaire, who knows about winning. He's got a lot of Stanley Cup rings, and this guy's resume is very impressive. There's no question, Eric. This guy knows how to coach. He's been a winner at every level as a player and as a coach. He brings Stanley Cups with him. He brings that so important, that teaching aspect to this game. And that's what he's looking to do right now. He wants to make sure his players learn from his experience, and they have been taught very, very well. Now, you know, Jacques Lemaire was leading the good life in Sarasota, Florida, before Doug Risebrow, the GM, coaxed him out of retirement and said, why don't you come be our coach? But the question we asked Jacques Lemaire is, can you deal with the losing of, of expansion? You know, I just don't want to think that uh, we'll win only a few games. I, I, I don't want, just don't want to believe it. I don't want to think about that. I want to win every game if, if possible. I know we won't. And how I'm going to deal with it, I guess I'll have to wait. Well, Mike Goldberg, we know Jacques Lemaire has a passion for this game. One reason he's excited is the youngster, Marion Gabryk. Well, Marion Gabryk is an outstanding talent. He's only 18 years old. He said the last couple of days he's nervous but excited. You watch him wear number 10, and it makes me think of Pavel Bure, who starred so many years with the Vancouver Canucks. Now he is with the Florida Panthers. When Pavel broke into the NHL, he was 21 years old. He scored 34 goals that first season. I don't know if you can expect the same numbers from Gabryk, but I know one thing, Tom. Tommy, he has the same type of skills. Well, there's no question. He knows how to play this game. But, you know, this is such an important part. You have to have some offense. He's one of the franchise players. No question he'll be there. The Wild, though, will only go as far as their goalies will take them. They've got Manny Fernandez and Jamie McLennan. McLennan will be in the nets tonight when they start the first ever game in Wild history. How is Jamie McLennan between the pipes? Well, he's, he's going to be a tremendous goal there. He's got some experience, not a lot, 29 years of age, but he has got to be very happy. This is a guy who knows how to play. He's very excited being the first goalie ever for the Wild. Now, a lot of Minnesota fans are wondering just who are the Minnesota Wild. Mike Goldberg, here's a look at some of the names you're going to be talking about all year. And looking forward to talking about it. And I'll tell you what, four solid lines. And Craig Hartsburg, the head coach of Anaheim, was saying they'll come at you in swarms. Cam Stewart, gritty player, Jimmy Dowd, and of course, Jeff Nielsen spent the last two and a half seasons with the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim and experience at the blue line. Guys who can control the puck and Brad Bombardier, a young gunner who won a cup with the New Jersey Devils. So there you see it, the guys that will make history for the Minnesota Wild. Sean O'Donnell is the Wild's captain of the month. Of course, that will change next month and the month after. And what about Paul Correa, one of the great stars in this game for the Anaheim Mighty Ducks? Paul Correa is absolutely a spectacular player. Of course, he had an incident with Aaron Gavey, but he will play tonight 
as will Sean O'Donnell. The thing about Paul Correa is that he knows his Ducks have never won on opening night. They'll try to do so tonight, but so will the Wild as they look for history. Sean O'Donnell will be on the ice a lot with Curtis Lecision when Paul Correa and Tamu Solani are on the ice for the Ducks. That's right. Both captains with pre-season suspensions. They'll be ready to go tonight when we make some history here in Anaheim. We'll be back at the pond. The Minnesota Wild pregame report on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by your local Northland Ford store and by Treasure Island Resort and Casino, bigger, better, and more tropical than ever. And I guess it's only fitting we mention the word tropical. We are in tropical Southern California. Tom Reed, former North Star great, former Gopher analyst, you know about playing in this league. Take us back to your days when you played with the Minnesota North Stars. Well, I'll tell you, Eric, it was a long time ago, it seems right now. I came to Minnesota in the second year of expansion from Chicago. But I remember the days of the Gump Worsleys and the Cesar Maniagos and the Bill Goldsworthy and the Danny Grants. And that's when I was just a little bit faster. But the big key here, that was a penalty shot. That was my big claim to fame, scoring against Ken Dryden. And what memories it has been. But when you go back to the 80s, that 81 and 91, when the, the team went to the Stanley Cup Finals, those are things people remember. The town was just rocking that time. And we're going to see that in just a few short years with this wild hockey club. <laughs> and what I remember is most of you guys didn't wear helmets back then, and masks on goalies were optional. Well, Mike Goldberg had a chance to catch up with Mighty Ducks head coach Craig Hartsburg a little bit earlier today. He's a former North Star. Let's listen in to their chat. Thank you very much, Eric. Downstairs with the head coach of the Mighty Ducks, Craig Hartsburg. And ironic, isn't it, that the Minnesota Wild play their first NHL game against a team that's coached by a North Star former captain. Well, it's it's certainly nice for me to see hockey back in Minnesota, and it, they should never have left. And uh, you know, as ex North Stars, it, it hurt when they left. It was it uh, was very disappointing, but I'm glad they're back in the league. Craig, when I say hockey in Minnesota, what does that mean to you? Well, obviously, a lot of personal things for me. I spent my whole career here as a player, and uh, you know, it's it's a great place to to live, and the people are great, the fans are great, and. It's, you know, when you talk about, again, USA Hockey, that's, it's a hockey state, and Minneapolis, St. Paul are, are hockey cities, so there should be hockey there. A week ago, you were able to see the new XL Energy Center, the excitement in downtown St. Paul. Do you feel like hockey will be successful again here in the Twin Cities? No, I have no doubt. I think that the people, certainly after losing it the first time, they're, they respect the fact that uh, the National Hockey League is the best league in the world, and I think they're real excited about having them back. Well, there's no question there's great excitement, great enthusiasm enthusiasm in the Twin Cities for the return of hockey, but there's also that tie to the North Stars. Is there a defining moment that takes you back to your days as a former captain here in uh, the Twin Cities? Well, I think obviously the getting to the finals in 1981, and it was unfortunate we lost to, to the Islanders. They were a great team, but that was a that was a great, great run in the playoffs. It was a lot of fun for all of us, and you know, I think a big reason we did have that run was the fans. They were, you know, that Met Center was was unbelievable. Craig, let's talk about your hockey team, the Mighty Ducks. Missed the playoffs last year. Korea and Solani obviously are are, are permanents. They're always going to play well for you. Steve Ruchin is out early part of the season. That hurts, but you've talked a lot about the fact you feel like you have a deeper roster than you did one season ago. Well, we've made a lot of changes over over the last uh, year, and, and we've added depth especially up front we've added size and we think that we've also added speed with getting bigger so uh, we're, we're a team that's still building we're a young team really a young organization in the league and uh, we made the playoffs two years ago and we want to get back to that that thing at the end of the year that everybody loves Craig, I know sometimes you can be a sentimental guy. Not sentimental enough, though, to help the Wild win their first game tonight, though. Well, it's actually, it's our league, the league right now is so tough that the playoff race starts tonight. And every point is so crucial that uh, every game, be, you know, like I said, tonight starts the playoff race. Craig, there's a lot of fans of yours that will always be in the Twin Cities. Thanks for being on the pregame show. Thank you very much. Craig Hartsburg, the head coach of the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. And we return to Anaheim with more of our first ever pregame presentation of Wild Hockey on Fox Sports Net after this time up. This community has a great passion for hockey. This state has a great passion for hockey and has a great tradition. Uh, it is my goal to build a team that will be passionate about playing hockey. 
And we are back at the pond in Anaheim. Eric Nelson joined by the executive VP and general manager, Doug Reisbrow, a true hockey architect, because you have built this team from the ice up, and tonight you're going to see the fruits, hopefully, of your labor. Yeah, it's been more than the players. You know, it started with the staff, and we had to go out and find scouts, and we had to kind of coordinate everything. So uh, it's, been, uh, it's been really fun and really rewarding, and the players have been uh, what we expected. They're hardworking. They've come together as a team, and they're going to have to be that way to, to have uh, a successful season. Talk a bit about Scott Pellerin, one of the guys you got via the expansion draft from the St. Louis Blues. I mean, they won the President's uh, Trophy last year, most points in the NHL. What can he add to this team? Well, you know, when I started off, I talked about passion and commitment, and uh, we're looking for models like that, and Scotty is that. You know, uh, he's been a hard worker, uh, he's been a character kid, and ultimately, coming out of St. Louis in a winning program, I think will be a, a positive influence, and also for the players to try and understand the big picture where we're trying to get to. Passion and commitment are words I've heard you use a lot since you took this wild job. You want a certain kind of player. Is there kind of a wild mindset? I mean, I go back to when you were in Montreal along with Jacques Lemaire. Are you trying to establish that kind of a mindset? Well, I, you know, the players have to work hard and they have to be committed to the, the game and they have to have a pride about their game and they have to have a respect for their teammates. And I think to, to get there, to start with that is uh, basic fundamentals of trying to develop a winner and trying to develop a winning attitude. And uh, I think we did that with a lot of the players that we acquired. Whenever you take somebody number one, your amateur pick, Marian Gabrick out of Slovakia, the expectations are very high, the bar is very high. What can we expect from this kid who was up here with the big club? Well, I think you got to expect it's a long project and that this kid has the ability to uh, skate, which we wanted to develop a skating team. He has offense, but it's not all going to show up in year one. And uh, what we like about him is he's come ready to make the adjustment and work hard and fit in, and uh, that's been real positive for him and positive for us. We talked earlier in the broadcast about your goaltenders, McLennan and Fernandez. Uh, are you confident that those two can withstand the long, grueling haul of an 82-game expansion season? Well, uh, you're right. I mean, games that we're going to be good, our goaltenders are going to be a factor, and uh, they're going to be factors like they've been to date where we've had to rely on them to keep us in games. But there's good competition amongst them. They both want the job. Uh, they're both understanding that the other guy can have a good night they got to be supportive of that and uh, we have to support them and certainly not giving them too much to bear but in moments we're going to rely on them and they know that. I want to know what you said to Jacques Lemaire when you went down to Sarasota, Florida. This guy's living on the beach, a nice retirement. He's done everything in hockey. How did you get him back to the bench? Well, I knew he wanted to coach again. I uh, I was uh, convinced within five minutes after talking to him that he wanted to coach again and that he has a passion for coaching. And really, he was just feeling me out as to what we were trying to do. And uh, I said, you know, Jacques, it's a long process with an expansion team. We got to put the fundamentals in, and I need a good teacher, and you represent all that and I think that's what he wanted to hear and truly he is a, a big factor in us developing the team that we want to be. And the thrill for you to build something from the ground up, I imagine uh, that's going to be just a great feeling. Well, it's been, I haven't had any bad days. That's probably <laughs> how to describe it. You know, I've had great reward personally of dealing with the people that we've had. They've all been inspired by the, the opportunity because it represents an opportunity to them and the players. You know, I was talking about other GMs. Some nights they worry about how hard their team will work. I know that won't be the case with me. I know that they'll give what they can give and uh, some nights it'll be enough and some nights it won't be enough, but I'll never be challenging them that they didn't work hard enough. Well, Doug, thanks for stopping by. You're still undefeated as the Wild GM. Let's hope it continues. Oh, well, that's what we're hoping, too. <laughs> All right. Doug Reisbrow, Executive Vice President and General Manager of the Minnesota Wild. When we return, we'll take a look at the North. We'll be playing. This is the pregame show on Fox Sports Net. And we are back at the pond in Anaheim, just minutes from a history-making night in the history of the Minnesota Wild, who will play their very first game right here on Fox Sports Net against the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Well, Tom, the Wild are in a different division than the old North Stars used to be. It's the NHL's Northwest Division. A lot of trips to Calgary and Edmonton and Colorado will be forthcoming. Well, there's no question, but you you know, when you look at the makeup of this, of this league right now, there's a lot more 
Europeans than we've ever seen before. Many years ago, back in the mid 60s, only a couple of Americans, but that changed quite a bit. And all of a sudden now we have the Europeans coming into it. There's been a lot of political things that have happened that have brought those players over, the Russians. And you look at the new, the look of this new division also. Well, Colorado right at the top, they are a tremendous team. But I'll tell you, they're going to have some competition. Edmonton's moving up, Vancouver, Calgary, all think they have made some great, great progress. And of course, the Wild, being the expansion club, they're going to struggle a little bit. But the one thing that Jacques has talked about is patience. How important that is with this hockey club and he will have that and the fans need to have that also and let's get back to that european influence because it has been something that has been a major transformation in this sport we last saw the nhl in minnesota in 93 since then there have been uh, a lot more guys from countries that we can hardly pronounce it's a global game now it really is i mean they can go worldwide you don't see that influence in some of the other sports but it's tremendous also because what you want in the national hockey are the best players in the world and we have seen that you look at some of the big goals the yager is just leading the league right now there's no question he is the number one player in in the NHL and when you've got players of that caliber who have that influence whether they be from Europe whether it be from Canada whether it be from the United States it adds credibility to the league and it adds a lot of excitement yes indeed and we're seeing some footage of some of those guys Yager and Burry and Iserman and those are names that uh, Minnesotans will re-familiarize themselves with uh, do you think it's good for the sport absolutely absolutely you want to you want to have the best and wherever they're from it doesn't matter I hear so often about well there's not enough of this national enough of that you know what what we want to see are the best players in the world compete at the highest level and we can see that right here in Minnesota. Speaking of high levels, a lot of experts say the Colorado Avalanche will be skating with the Cup come late May or early June. Do you agree? Are the Avalanche the team to beat? Well, they certainly are a tremendous hockey club. There's no question. But, you know, injuries play a key part in how a team is going to produce. Suspensions. When you got players who know how to play and know how to win, you rely on those players. But it isn't the same every year. How many times do championship teams repeat? It doesn't always happen. So there's, every time you're on top, there's somebody else who's gunning for your position. You know, and reading the newspapers out of Denver and, and talking to people around the league, the mantra with the avalanches we've got to win the title they don't want anything less what kind of expectations does that create when all you expect is to win a title well there's no question the bar has been set by this hockey club and yet they have to achieve that level once again but all of a sudden you have teams like New Jersey who say we want that also there's a lot of teams the Dallas Stars many many teams clawed their way back to the top but sports is a lot like a cycle where you have a great team you seem to go to the bottom a little bit then you come back on and it's very tough to stay on top because everybody else wants your position but each each player has to look within themselves. And you heard, you know, Dougie Riseborough talking about how important it was to have character players. You need those character players, but you also have to have the, the word team and your whole concept. You win as a team, not as individuals. All right, Tom, always a pleasure to share the airways with Thanks, you. Eric. I'll be talking to you during the game. Now, one of the guys we're going to be watching a lot and focusing in on is Paul Correa, the Anaheim Mighty Ducks superstar. The Wild hope to keep this man in check tonight. This is the Fox Sportsnet pregame show from Anaheim. The Minnesota Wild pregame report on Fox Sports Net has been brought to you by Dodge and your friendly Dodge dealers. Well, whenever you see Paul Correa on ice, that is something special to behold. He is one of the top players in the National Hockey League. Now, there have been some rules changes, and we talked to Correa about the effort to eliminate slick stick slashes and other things like that in the National Hockey League. Well, I think that um, the skill in the game will come back a little bit if uh, the league is diligent in, in keeping those rules intact all year long. I mean, it's one thing to start them in exhibition. It's another thing to have the same rules in April. So I'm very hopeful that uh, they stick with it. And, and uh, I think that'll be better for the fans and for the game. Well, the Minnesota Wild are close to skating on the ice for the first time in franchise history. What is it like to be an expansion team? Anaheim's Paul Correa knows all about that. He was here when Anaheim broke the seal on its team in 93. Here's what he had to say about being a first year club. The fans just have to be patient and, and really enjoy just the, the first couple of years. Um, I think people here are, are realistic and not expecting a Stanley Cup <laughs> right off the bat. But um, I think at, at the other time, because of the parity in the league, that it, it's not going to take them, you know, 
seven, eight years for them to make the playoffs. I mean, they'll, uh, you know, hopefully if they have uh, good management here and the, and the players, especially the young players, grow, they'll be uh, contending for the playoffs uh, right off the bat. And, uh, and I think that's great for the league and, and, uh, and great for the people of Minnesota. That was former Hobie Baker Award winner at the University of Maine, Paul Correa. We are coming up on Face Off. And how fitting, we are just miles from Disneyland, and in a matter of minutes, Minnesota hockey fans will be in Fantasyland. Yes, indeed, the NHL is set to return on Fox Sportsnet. Mike Goldberg and Tom Reed will have the play-by-play. -play. Don't go away. Lake New York is to baseball. Green Bay football, or Boston to basketball, Minnesota is the state of hockey. For 26 years, the North Stars built a tradition steeped in hockey history. Yet for all they accomplished, Minnesota would ultimately lose their beloved team as Broughton and Company headed south for Texas, leaving hockey's heartland an unimaginable void. On June 25th, 1997, that devastation turned into jubilation. And as we like to say in Minnesota, that hockey's back. A new set of names and numbers, a new brand of intensity and emotion awaits these great Twin City fans. The excitement of NHL hockey has returned. The wait and the heartache are over, and tonight, a new era begins. Minnesota's back in the NHL, next on Fox Sports Net. It has been 2,732 days since last in the Upper Midwest we saw the NHL game played, and tonight, under the logo that says Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, hockey history will be made as the Minnesota Wild are set to face off against the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim in the first ever game played in a new era. And it will take place right here on Fox Sports Net. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Anaheim. Along with my partner, Tom Reed, I'm Mike Goldberg. Tom, a longtime fixture with hockey in Minnesota. Tom, my pleasure to be your partner in this first season. And I think tonight, a night to celebrate. This night is for the fans because an old friend is back in town. Well, you're absolutely right, Mike. There's no questions, not just the fans, it's the former players, everyone connected with this team. And I tell you, they are excited right now that hockey is back. Hockey is back. For hockey to be successful this year, it will begin between the pipes. And tonight, Tonight, it will begin with Jamie McLennan. He will be the man who will go in the record books as the first ever goalie to put on the jersey in the real game. And what a tremendous honor it is for him. You know, he's 29 years of age. He's been a backup goaltender. Good season last year at St. Louis. But he's also the guy's the type of guy that the players love to be with. They want to be around him. He's a fun guy to be around, but when it comes to playing playing this game and stopping the puck, he could be the best. Well, certainly the one thing that is familiar to Jacques Lemaire are good goaltenders and great defensive players, and the two mainstays on the blue line will be the two guys with the most experience, the captain, Sean O'Donnell, and longtime veteran, Curtis LeCision. Well, when you look at those players, they have the experience. You look to those guys for the leadership. Back at the point, remember Jacques Lemaire built this team from the goal out. He wants solid goaltender. He has that and the like of McLennan and with Fernandez, but he also has those defensemen who can make it happen and be strong defensively. They'll have a pretty good year. You know, when you look at the defensive system in which Jacques Lemaire has always run, especially when he won a Stanley Cup championship in 1995, it begins from the back and moves to the forward, something that the captain, Sean O'Donnell, is very familiar with. I think, you know, Jacques preaches defense first, and by that, I don't think he means just dump the puck in and let them come at you. You know, there is some offense. It's just a matter of he wants all five guys playing on the same system and playing, you know, together. And I think we do have good goaltending, we have good defense, and we have good young forwards. I don't think we, as a unit, have a whole lot of scoring, but I don't think the teams are going to have that much scoring against us. And Jacques' philosophy, which obviously has worked over his career, is if you only allow the team one or two goals against tonight or three goals against tonight, you have a chance every night. And, and that's the kind of team they've built here. Well, they certainly have done that, Tom, and they will get two big challenges, perhaps two of the biggest challenges in the NHL this evening in the dynamic duo of Paul Carrillo and Temu Solani. Well, 
Well, when you look at these two players, number four and number five last year, respectively, in scoring in the NHL, they are magicians on ice. They're fun to watch, but I will bet you they will have their hands full because the Wild have no intentions of letting them roam freely on this ice surface. Well, the interesting thing about Korea and Solani are that they have talked a lot about the fact that they need more depth. Tonight, they play without their regular center in Steve Ruchin. They will play with Germán Titov, longtime veteran, centering that first line. Well, he's got a real task, but you know what? This hockey club has to win with more than just one line, and that's what Coach Greg Harsberg wants. He needs more goals, more production from the rest of the crew. Tonight, a night of firsts. The first goal, will it come by a wild player? The first win, will it come tonight? And for the first time, Jacques Lemaire will bring the wild onto the ice, and a new friend will return home. Minnesota Wild Hockey on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by your local Northland Ford store. By Wells Fargo, the next stage. By Treasure Island Resort and Casino, bigger, better, more tropical than ever. By Budweiser, with a crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. And by Dodge and your friendly Dodge dealer. Now welcome back inside the Arrowhead Pond of Anaheim as the minutes have now become seconds and we are getting set for the first face off in the history of this new franchise call it alphabetically the 30th franchise in NHL history and yeah, Mike there's no question that this uh, this is a special moment right now for not only the people in Minnesota watching this game here in Anaheim but also for these players who know that they are the chosen ones by coach Jacques Lemaire, Doug Risebro, the coaching staff consisting of Mario Tremblay and Mike Ramsey. Uh, this is a really a very special time for these guys to sit back and reflect. But you know what? Once that puck drops the ice, that's what they've been waiting for. For the last month, they've worked very hard at training camp to be one of those chosen players. And right now, it's up to them. And you know full well that there are players who are down in Cleveland, the IHL, with the Lumberjacks, who want to be here also. So getting here is one thing. Staying here is another. And each person must produce. As we get set for the national anthem sung by Wayne Brady, we will take it all in with our fans in the upper Midwest as the drop of the puck not far away here from Anaheim. And it will be a wonderful evening. From Long Beach, Heather Moody. From Placenta, Julie Swale. From Anaheim, Bernice Orway. From the gold medalist women's softball team. From Senator Frank From Chino Hills, Leah O'Brien Amico. Now you get a look at some of the faces. Wes Walls, who was in Calgary with Doug Reisbrow. And the anticipation in the eyes of Cam Stewart, and Jeff Nielsen sitting there taking off his helmet. He's familiar with these surroundings. He spent two and a half seasons with the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, was exposed and now belongs to the Minnesota Wild. You know, it will be an evening for this young man, Jamie McLennan, which will be one of first. And I talked to Jamie in the locker room after practice. He said, let's get the first safe out of the way. Let's try to get the first win out of the way also. Well, absolutely. You know, they've waited for this moment. For, and one thing about these players, these players who have experience, and Jamie's been around a long time, he's in his seventh year, he knows what it's like once that puck is dropped. They will forget everything that has happened now, beforehand. Right now, the moment is at hand for these young men to be a part of this of history the being made here tonight, TV and that's the most important thing. Once it's, once it's there, it anyway? everything else is on the outside. Wayne everything Brady happens between the glass here on that ice surface, and the first important anthem. save is an important one because it gets him into that game quickly. The goaltenders like to have that quick shot. Wayne Brady will honor America with the singing of the national anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire 
regular season at home was their first ever game played. They lost that night in 1993 to the Detroit Red Wings by a final score of 7-3. to three. But lots of fanfare. Michael Buffer will get things ready to rumble here this evening, and so will the head coach, Jacques Lemaire. Well, it's interesting. Also, the only two things these, the, the only thing these two teams have in common right now is neither one of them have ever uh, won a season opener. That's going to change tonight, we think. They think there will be a winner by the end of this contest, but it's been seven times that the Anaheim Mighty Ducks have tried. They have not been successful. Six of those seven times, they've been on the road. This is only the second time they've been in this building for a season from, uh, first game. And oftentimes, they also played without their superstar, Paul Correa. Let's turn it back down to the Master of Ceremonies at ice level as we get set for a ceremonial dropping of the puck here at the Mighty Arrowhead Ducks Pond of Anaheim. Paul Correa and Minnesota Wild Captain Sean O'Donnell come to center ice for the ceremonial faceoff. Dropping the puck tonight, please welcome back Mr. Let's Get Ready to Rumble, Michael Buffer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join the Mighty Ducks and the rest of the NHL as we officially welcome the Minnesota Wild to the NHL. Now, what a feeling for Sean O'Donnell. We've talked a lot to Sean. In the last couple of days, he is wearing the C on his jersey. He is a proud young man who played with the Los Angeles Kings and proud and honored was the word he used, Tommy, to be the first ever captain of the Minnesota Wild. Mike, I've had the opportunity to wear the C a couple of games in, with the North Stars and the A for quite a while, and it well, is a special and thing to have. And you don't make a captain. A captain needs a captain or he's not. Those are some goals or something are within. And you don't have to be a talker to be a captain. You have to be a leader by example. And those guys can do it. The starting goalie for the first ever game in the history of the Minnesota Wild, Jamie McLennan. Well, he's a 29-year-old youngster. And you look at his record last season, stuck up in St. Louis in the expansion draft. And he's one of those kids that wants to play. He well, plays well under pressure. During the preseason, no losses. He had one victory and two ties in that stretch. And a good one for Anaheim, who wants to come off perhaps the toughest year he has had in a Ducks jersey. The first ever Duck to play goalie and the only remaining member of that 93 team. Guy A. Bear gets the start tonight for the Mighty Ducks. Our referees, Shane Heyer and Brad Watson, the linesman Darren Gibbs and Mark Perret. And here it is, the Minnesota Wild have been welcomed back to the National Hockey League. Sent behind the net, chased down by Ruslan Soleil and icing the quick call as they take this puck and they will work it towards someone very important, a historic night as the first puck dropped officially will be working its way perhaps to the great state of Minnesota. And rightfully it should. You saw the little play by Benisek early on here, getting the puck, shooting down just a little bit of the jitters. It'll take a few moments, a few shifts by these players before they're ready. You'll see quick line changes by the Wild also. You can bet the butterflies are flo floating here right now, but uh, pretty soon they'll be seen like bees. So Germán Titov to take the draw against West Wallace. Korea gets it back to Tevardovsky. Shot hit the post. Oh, and Tevardovsky with the drive off the near post, and I don't think Jamie McLennan ever saw it. Well, once again, that faceoff is so, so important. Titov able to get the, the faceoff back to the point. And when you win those faceoffs, especially in your offensive zone, good things happen. Shot save and a kick save made by Guy Bear on a turnover. And Antti Loxanen gets the first shot on goal for Minnesota. 
Here is Loxanen, and a bear will freeze. So good scoring chances on both ends of the ring. The thing is, when things happen in your own defensive zone, you've got to have the composure to get the puck and move it right back up. You're going to watch the draw here, and it goes right back to number 10, Tverdowski, and he knows how to shoot. Look where he is, close to the boards, but look at the traffic also in front of McLennan. He can't quite see the puck, but he's out far enough to take the angle away and make certain that puck is on the outside. When you're hitting the pipe, you're not on target. So Oleg Tverdowski hits the post, and we are scoreless. Just underway here in Anaheim. Jim Dowd to take the face off for Minnesota, won again by Mike LeClaire in the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. The rookie, Vitaly Vishnevsky, plays it up for the Mighty Ducks into the neutral zone. Marty McGinnis can't get it past the last line of defense for Minnesota. Pellerin is on the line with Gabrick and Jimmy Dowd. Here is Dowd, tried to get it back to the point position, and now Scott Pellerin off the skate of Sean O'Donnell. Wild in the road uniforms. The green uniforms for this first game. Marty McGinnis, Jim Dowd gets there first and spun up back into the neutral zone. And that's the type of play that Coach Jacques uh, Lemaire is looking for, the defensive part of Jim Dow coming back in to help out the defenseman in that area. Pellerin gets a stick on it, dumps it deep into the duck zone. Here's Guy Bear trying to fight for it. And the puck squirts to the near side boards. Good hit applied by the former King Matt Johnson, just acquired at the end of the preseason. Nazarov in a kick saved by McLennan, and the puck is skated down by Stacy Roost. Roos flips it ahead. Here's Philip Kuba. Kuba ahead to Maxim Suzinski. And Johnson spins and sends it in. Jason Marshall, number 23 for Anaheim. Ahead to Ronquist. Ronquist through the neutral zone. And skated down by Brad Bombardier. Bombardier flips it off the glass, gets it up. Suzinski off his hand and out of play. Once again, if you missed the pregame show, we want to welcome in the third member of our broadcast team here on Fox Sports Net, Eric Nelson. What do you have, Eric? Well, you know, Craig Hartsburg, the Mighty Ducks head coach, is no stranger to Minnesota hockey fans. He's a former North Star. In fact, he was named to the Stars' 25th anniversary dream team back in the early 90s. He holds seven North Star records. I was talking to some Mighty Duck players earlier today, and they described him as very intense and very focused back upstairs well, thanks Eric top pick the sixth overall of the stars back in 1979 scored 44 points his rookie season wore the sea Tommy all 10 years of his NHL career Craig Hartsburg spent in the jersey of the Minnesota North Stars well very offensive mind defenseman also but great speed was able to come back and it's a treat for him I know to be able to work with guys like Solani and also with Korea and those two players bring that offense which certainly was his flavor Third season for Hartsburg, one game over 500 in his first two years. Anaheim missing the playoffs last season, and there are heightened expectations for this team in their eighth NHL season here in 2000-2001. Pass on the doorstep, shot just wide. Missing the net spinning was Sergei Krivokrasov. Davey Stewart and Krivokrasov. Here is Sergei Krivokrasov now controlling for Minnesota. Stops and looks, has no one at the point, dumps it down. Aaron Gavey now tries to cycle it to Cam Stewart. Sekras gets it. And now Crevo looking, waiting, shot off net. Cam Stewart couldn't get a good shot away. He wears number 18. And here comes Vitaly Vizhnevsky up ahead to Big Jim Cummins, and he'll dump it in for Anaheim. Well, this is where you'll see the transition game work so well for the Wild, too. They don't want to sit back in their own defensive zone with that puck. They want to get it. They want to move it quickly and get it in the offensive zone. Top line back on the ice for Anaheim. Timu Solani, Germán Titov with the injury to Steve Ruchin, the broken hand. He'll be out for the first two weeks of the regular season. And so Germán Titov centers the line with one of the most dynamic players in the National Hockey League, Paul Correa. Well, what a tremendous asset he has been to the National Hockey League. He is one of the top three players in the world in my estimation and the one thing with him is he knows how to win he and Solani work so well together these two guys go back and forth they're best of friends Solani is one of those guys who can make it work for him and he loves magic well he performs magic not only off the ice but on the ice and there's no question that these two guys bring an element to this game that it's fun to watch when they play on the road and, and the fans in the in the different cities have a chance to see them perform the finish flash in all Korea Tverdovsky off off the draw, kick save and a good one by McLennan. That's another faceoff win by Germán Titoff. 
Pellerin able to get it up to center. Ironically, Steve Ruchin was second best in the National Hockey League last year in face-off wins. Titoff comes on this line tonight in Ruchin's absence and wins two key draws inside the offensive zone for Anaheim. Well, one of the things also is if you remember, Titoff played in Pittsburgh, so he played with Yager, so he's got that European flavor, knows how to work so well with the, the members. Korea's blast off the stick of Lecision and out of play. And face-offs, the little things, Tom, when the game becomes so close are the things that make the difference between winners and losers. Absolutely. Even that last play, you saw Lecision going back there and just played so perfectly as a defenseman, keeping Korea on the outside and just waiting until the shot was going to be taken and they just kind of move in. But watch here, once again, winning the draw, blocking out his man, allowing his wingers to come back in. And as you can see, Tevardoski with that big bullet of his, quick, quick snapshot, just takes it right to the target. Now, Oleg Tevardoski had a career-high 15 goals last season, the second most productive year of his career. He has a new three-year contract. He is the leader on the blue line for the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. 16-03 remains in the first period, scoreless. Here in Anaheim, Gavey will take the draw for the Wild. Lost again as Matt Cullen, Minnesota native, wins the faceoff for Anaheim. Matt's really worked hard in the offseason. Tommy put on about 12 pounds. He wants to come out and really prove something here. Matt Cullen from Virginia, Minnesota, and St. Cloud State. Well, they're really happy with his work ethic, and he works very hard. The one thing they talked about was that he has to work on his defensive part of the game. He needs to be a little more consistent, but he's just a youngster, and so he's got plenty of time, and you can bet that he will develop under the, uh, the leadership of uh, Craig Hartsburg. Gaby lost an edge. Cam Stewart tries to get it up, dumped in, and here comes Cullen. Philip Kuba, and now played on the far side boards, kept in by the Ducks at the blue line. Behind the net is Cullen. Cullen leaves it for Nazarov. To the point, shot deflected in front and chased down by Cam Stewart. Stewart flips it up and into the neutral zone. Stewart, Gaby, and Kriva Krasov on the forward line here for Minnesota. Here's Jonas Ronquist across the blue line. Wanted to leave it for Cullen, and Minnesota comes back the other way. Stacy Roos, the former Red Wing number 22, pinched off the play, and Matt Johnson delivers a big check, and that will be the first penalty of the night. Johnson will go to the box, and Anaheim will have the first power play. Well, no question, Matt Johnson, he has got some size as he came in there. He's one of those guys who knows how to use the body. Six foot five, 235 pounds, and he just, no question, took out. Wisniewski along the boards. He's going to be called for a charge right here as he came off the bench, and he just uh, draws the first penalty for the Wild in history. And so the Wild go a man short. That coming at 5.07 of period number one. Last year, 144 penalty minutes and 64 games played for Matt Johnson, acquired from the Atlanta Thrashers for a draft pick, and he was really put in this lineup to replace Jeff Augers, who was lost on the waiver draft. So power play number one of our contest, and it belongs to Anaheim. The penalty kill in the preseason was absolutely outstanding for Minnesota. In fact, they had the best rated penalty killing unit in all of the exhibition season in the National Hockey League. Well, they did, Mike, and they were over 95% in that area, and that's, that's a big plus. And this is the type of team that may not score a lot of goals, but they're a good, solid defensive team. Remember, when it comes to expansion drafts, no team is going to give up those goal scores. They'll give up the players who maybe play the, the defensive part of the game a little bit more because they don't. there's not a lot of shooters that they can depend on. So with that in mind, these players have the experience how to play defense. And so when it comes to the penalty killing situations, they've got those players who have the experience of being out there in these uh, shorthanded opportunities. Anaheim's power play two years ago was tops in the National Hockey League. They struggled last season 14th, and they were absolutely miserable with the man advantage in the preseason. In fact, when these two teams met in the preseason, the Ducks were 0 for 10 with the man advantage against the Minnesota Wild. They have 123 remaining in the first power play of the night here. Korea will keep it inside the offensive zone. Gloved by Lecision, but not clear. Tevardovsky kept it in momentarily, and Pellerin able to get it away. And as you know, Mike, it's the, the goaltending and the special teams that make a difference in a hockey game, and that's where the power play is so important. Lecision hit by Germán Titov. As Tom mentioned, he spent a couple of seasons with Yamir Yager in Pittsburgh. Very highly skilled veteran of the National Hockey League. Whistle and a stoppage with 13.51 remaining in 58 seconds on the power play for Anaheim. Well, the net had come off at standards, and that's the reason for the stoppage of play. 
officials just getting it set right there. As you look at once again, Paul Korea won the Hobie Baker Award as a freshman at the University of Maine. And uh, just a, has been a tremendous player all the way through. Was the Canadian Hockey Player of the Year back in 93. You know, it's funny, we were talking about the fact that it has been thousands of days since 1993 when the NHL was in the Twin Cities. That was the year that Paul Correa was a freshman at Maine, 1993. So a perfect example of reintroducing the sport to the fans in the upper Midwest. And tonight we debut on Fox Sports Net. So Correa sits down, Cullen's line is on with the man advantage for Anaheim. Mike LeClaire started out very well last year for Anaheim. Hurt his elbow was never the same. He gives it to Cullen. Cullen hit by Sekaris. And the Wild able to clear it out. Well, those foot passes are so important when you're deep in your own zone just to dump it over the defenseman's head to get it down the ice and kill off that penalty clock. Taken and controlled by Jim Dowd. Anti Laxanen dumps it back in. 21 seconds remaining in the man advantage. And you saw Laxanen, instead of going back into his own zone with the puck, didn't want to take any chances, play smart defensive, get it back into the offensive zone, and wind down the clock. Nicholas Havlid dumped it into the wild zone. Wild have not had a good, or pardon me, the Ducks have not had a good scoring chance against the Wild here with the man advantage. Watch out, Russell Soleil. He hit the post. Two posts, no goals by Ruslan Soleil and Oleg Tevardovsky. Johnson stayed onside, shot from the bad angle, so he's out of the box. And another one clanking off the iron a moment ago. Deflection in front by Pellerin, just wide of Guillet Bear. Puck back into center. Brad Bombardier will skate it down to the near side and Matt Johnson. Johnson bodied by Ruslan Soleil. Stacy Roost will dump it in. Maxim Suzinski will give chase. Johnson again trying to unload. He is fun to watch. Big Matt Johnson looking to work in traffic. Traverse to the point. Shot. Kick save made by Bear. Lecision dumps it in. Suzinski has Johnson to help out. Matt Johnson bodied on the play by Dan Bilesma. Here is Stacy Roos. Back to Johnson. Johnson looking in front and Cone intercepts. Well, he had the right idea trying to get the puck back to Bombardier, but just inadvertently gave it up. Slip move by Cohn, backhand shot, high, gloved away by Jamie McLennan. Bilesma leaves it for number 29, Cohn, and it gets back in the neutral zone. Cam Stewart tries to chase, Vishnevsky gets there first for the Ducks. The puck worked up across the line and dumped in. Cummins will go on the forecheck with Teton. Korea tries to keep it in camp. Here is Aaron Gavey, works through center, across the line, trying to stick handle around Nicholas Havlid, and he delivers a good body check, and we get a stoppage with 11.20 remaining in the first period. Well, Gavey doing a nice job of controlling that puck. He didn't have quite the speed that he was looking for. Bodies flying so far, Tommy, on a night of firsts on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to the Arrowhead Pond. Mike Goldberg, Tom Reed, Eric Nelson with you here on Fox Sports Net. MSC West Walls controls at number 37. Look for the centering pass. Korea intercepted. Walls gets it back. Walls can be slick with the puck. He has lots of skills. He's played the last couple of years overseas. So he's used to the European game. Also good NHL experience. Leaves it on the backhand now. Looking towards Laxon and shot goes through the crease. And Korea skates it down for Anaheim. Puck tangled for, finally controlled by the Mighty Ducks. To the near side, Tevodovsky tips it over to Korea. And Korea dumps it behind where McLennan will leave it. Ladislav Benesik can't get it out. Titoff on that front line with the absence of Steve Ruchin. Nifty play by Wes Walls, giving it to himself off the back of his own net. Well, those are the little, little things that make a difference in players, and Wes Walls has that, has that ability. As you mentioned, he has played in Europe a little bit, played in Switzerland. Last year, we picked up seven goals in that stretch, but more important, learning how to play on that style, that European style. 
Now, Wes Walls is an experienced guy, Tommy. Played six years with the Boston Bruins, the Philadelphia Flyers, Calgary Flames, Detroit Red Wings. Last year, spent some time in the International Hockey League, and so he will do some damage this year, he hopes, because as it is a rebirth for the fans at home, this is another chance for Wes Walls to continue what he hopes will be even a better NHL career. Right, a new lease on life for a lot of these players, a new lease to play in, in the National Hockey, the Premier League in the, in the world, and he's got such great speed and good hands, and he will make a difference with this team. Sean O'Donnell, the captain, gets it ahead to Marion Gabrick. Gabrick had the pass intercepted. He was looking for Pellerin. Now LeCision works on his man, and Curtis LeCision slow to get up. Back towards the far side boards. Gabrick can't clear it at the blue line. Now Marty McGinnis gives chase. O'Donnell holds his form. So does LeCision looking in front. Can't make a move. Now it's Mike LeClaire controlling for Anaheim to the point in Marshall. Over the stick of O'Donnell, skated down by the veteran Curtis LeCision. Boy, good defensive coverage also in that defensive zone. All the while, we're back in perfect position. There was no place for McGinnis to go with that puck. Everyone was covered. Puck goes out of play. 9.36 remains in the first period. First bit of blood on the left eye of Curtis LeCision. 9.36 remains in the first period. Scoreless here in Anaheim. The first game in the history of the Minnesota Wild. Vitaly Vishnevsky in his first NHL game for the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. The rookie gets it up, controlled momentarily by Bombardier. Nazarov acquired late in the preseason by Anaheim on the line with Cullen looking to shoot. Ronquist tries to spin, and Cam Stewart takes it for Minnesota. Big hit at the blue line by the rookie Vishnevsky on Stacy Roost. Now back to Bombardier. Brad Bombardier lost it. Cullen looks to center. Shot. Oh, what a glove save by Jamie McLennan. Well, Nazareth had the perfect opportunity right there. The big youngster who was six foot five, 234, had it nailed. But Jamie McLennan comes up with that quick glove, and that's what a goaltender wants to do. He wants to challenge. You watch here as all of a sudden Minnesota a little bit lax. Bombardier with the puck just loses. He lost his balance a little bit, and that's where you need help defensively coming in there. But look at Nazarov as he comes in. He just takes that perfect pass right on in front. He takes a shot, but watch the quick glove also. Jamie McLennan goes in there, gets the one pad down, but he's got that left mid of him just grabs on big save and we are still scoreless here in Anaheim first huge glove save oh, well, that made, made I tell you, by that, Jamie McLennan and that's a confidence builder yep. too Mike for him I mean every every shot that comes his way those tough saves make it a little bit easier the next time because he now he has a confidence I can do this Jamie McLennan making the start this evening is 139th NHL game played he and Manny Fernandez will split the time quite often. And tonight is a night for Jamie McLennan. Could it be Fernandez tomorrow? Well, tune in to Fox Sports Net, and you will find out. As the Wild play the Phoenix Coyotes tomorrow in the second game here on Fox Sports Net. First period here. And the puck moved up by Minnesota. Breakaway coming in. Moving shot. Saved made by D.A. Bear. Rebound Jimmy Dowd. Maxim Sushinsky almost had the first goal of the night. Still working towards the puck. And the penalty is called. So Guy Bear makes a big save. And Maxim Sushinsky is robbed on the play. Well, we have a penalty, but uh, there was a good hit at center ice also at the same time. But the Wild doing a great job. Watch a little move here, and that's what you want to do. You want to get the puck. The little flip as a defenseman came in, but all of a sudden that allows Sushinsky just to go in. And what a great play that was, too, by number six, Sekaris, who takes the puck. Just that little look is all it takes. The Gihir Bear at the opposite end also equal to the task. But almost the first goal, not quite. But it will be a power play opportunity for the Minnesota Wild. So power play number one for the Minnesota Wild. And Maxim Suzinski with a glorious scoring chance just a moment ago. The penalty is going to go against the Ducks number 28, Nicholas Havlid. Actually, they're going to call two penalties, Tom, on Havlid and Ladislav Kohn. So the Wild will have a five on three for an entire two minutes. Well, that's a big plus right now. You've got a two man advantage, and this is where you have to make the most of it. And the Wild will be outstretched, they'll be on the outside. You'll see the 
the triangle being formed in front of that net by the Mighty Ducks. They've got to try and keep those shots way to the outside and eliminate those shots getting through to their net miner as best they can. Face off. One by Dowd. Dowd, Gabrick on the ice. Here's Gabrick in front shot. Oh, what a save by Hebert! He absolutely robs Scott Pellerin. And the puck is cleared. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's for goaltending. You know, you get into situations where goaltenders can make the difference in the game. We saw a big save by McClennan. Now we're seeing a great shot also coming off the stick of Scott Pellerin. And you watch here as all of a sudden he takes that quick snapshot. It comes to him. He thinks he's got it. He wanted to go up a little bit higher with that, but couldn't quite do so. And the assistant captain almost made it home for the Wild. Wouldn't have that been ironic as Scott Good Pellerin play. scored the first ever goal in the preseason in a Minnesota Wild uniform. Jim Dowd, Marion Gavrick, Scott Pellerin with Benesik and Sekaris. The Europeans on the point. They control the puck very, very well. Face-off control, but the puck is cleared by Matt Cullen. These two European defensemen, Benesik from the Czech Republic and Sekaris from Slovakia, can be very good on the power play. Gavrick. The Russian leaves it for Pellerin. McGinnis tries to get it out to center, and he does. One minute, 19 seconds left in the five on three. Here is Dowd. Dowd to Gabrick. Gabrick waits. Gives it to Benesik. Across to Sekaris. Sekaris, shot! Oh, deflected just wide. Pellerin now controls for Minnesota. Pellerin to Sekaris. Waiting. Pellerin, one time shot high and over the net. Kept in by Benesik. Anaheim can't clear. Here's Gabbert. He's moving in. Looking back and save again by Bear. Good pressure by the Wild. Well, when you have a two-man advantage, you want to make the most of it. That is a franchise player. This guy here has got experience. Put them on the ice together, and good things can happen. You're going to see in front of the net here, you'll watch the Wild as they kind of press right here. The shot being kept in here by Benesik, but watch Gabrick also. He takes it. They talk about being 18 years of age. There's no question this youngster knows how to play. Very, very mature. Bob Nakley. The chairman of this franchise, one of the many men responsible for bringing hockey back to the upper Midwest. Look at his reaction a moment ago. He's an old goalie, that's why he, he knows what it's like. He can feel those shots. He does that just but walking think, down the street. I, I think he was hoping the other way. Decision now has it for Minnesota. Across, shot, pats it, rebound, oh, kicked aside by Bear. Sushinsky robbed again. Here is Kriever Krasov now for Minnesota. Kriever Krasov to Lecision. Lecision, shot, heads a rebound in front. Cleared, but not out. Now across to Curtis Lecision. Lecision trying to step it in, looking for a shooting angle. He fires, high shot, rebound, shot, and knocked down in front. It went off the mask of Bear. Now Lecision again. Gets it across. Kuba walking in. Here is Curtis Lecision to Stacy Roost. Roost, Lecision. Roost, waiting, waiting, looking. Shot, rebound in front. A bear again able to clear a side. Spectacular goaltending by Guy A. Bear. And the power play is over. Cone back the other way. Pad save made by McLennan. Great chances for the Wild. Big saves by Guy A. Bear. To the near side, watch out for Solani. Solani to Korea. Korea now spins in the offensive zone. Flips it back to Temu Solani. Five on five hockey. Titov shot is knocked down. And Jeff Nielsen able to get it back to center. Great scoring chances for Minnesota with the two-man advantage. Boy, and they had the chances. They certainly are working hard at it. They want to get that. They've had 12 shots in net to five by the Mighty Ducks. Here's Sekulis. Top of the circles. High shot. Oh, slips through the glove of P.A. Bear. But it trickles wide of the net. Titoff to the near side. Solani can't clear. West Walls, top of the circle. Shot. Oh, and that deflects just wide. And D.A. Bear has been absolutely magical. Here in the first 14 and a half minutes of the first ever game played by the Minnesota Wild. They tried and tried again. But D.A. Bear would not be beaten.
The last original duck, D.A. Bear, 33 years old, out of Troy, New York, came into this camp in the best shape of his career. He has made 14 saves here in the first period, some of the dramatic fashion. And nine of those shots came on the last power play that the Wild had. Five on three, advantage goes away. Scoreless here, 5-15 remaining in the first period from the Arrowhead Pond of Anaheim. Dumped in, Anti Alto will chase it down for the Ducks. Nicholas Havlid tries to work it up the far boards. Kept in by Gabrick. Gabrick behind the net, centering. Davey couldn't get a shot away. I'm sorry, Cam Stewart up there with Kriva Krasov. Now Stewart looking and frozen by Guy A. Bear. Now Sunday we're bringing the tailgate party to you with the NFL this morning on Fox Sports Net. The most rocking Sunday morning pregame show anywhere. Chris Myers leads the NFL this morning breakfast bunch for Chalk Talk, Trash Talk, Bagels, Donuts, and even comedian Jay Moore returns to mix things up. NFL this morning, Sunday at 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central, and 7 a.m. Pacific only on Fox Sports Net. Aaron Davey, number 44, with a chance, as Cam Stewart had a moment ago. Well, the Wilds certainly have been very strong in this first period, and the two-man power play certainly helped them, but the confidence level, the chances are there, Mike. Eventually, they'll start to come, and that's been the rub, but when you have a defensive team, maybe you don't score a lot, they'll get there. Shot knocked down in front, and controlled by Teberdowski. Teberdowski broke into the league here in Anaheim, at 18 years old. Now he is back and in an Anaheim jersey. Top defenseman wears number 10. There's the veteran T-top on the forecheck along with Korea. He's able to keep it in. Took it off the stick of Gabrick momentarily. Kicks it up to T-top. They're looking for Solani and the Wild able to clear the zone again. Pellerin skates it down. Looks to center to Gabrick. Gabrick tries to move around Ruslan Soleil. Germán T-top deep in his own zone. Gets it to Korea and Korea moves it ahead to center. Captured there by Jim Dowd. To the near side, Pellerin. Kicks it ahead, Teverdovsky. Fires it in, and it goes off the body of Ladislav Benesik. Behind the net, Dowd. Now he will bring it up the far side. Jim Dowd from Brick, New Jersey. Only New Jersey native to play in the National Hockey League. To center. Nazera, Ronquist bumped into by Sean O'Donnell. And flipped back into the zone and an offsides is called. 339 remains in the first period. Nazara, a big body, and he will add a little grit and determination in this Anaheim lineup. Well, there's no question. He certainly has that size, and that's one of the reasons they have picked him up, as we said before. Close to 235 pounds and 6'5", and you watch these players now, how big they are. Andy Sutton, who's not dressed, he's one of those guys also with the size at six foot five and six foot six, I should say, 235. Matt Johnson, 6'5". So we're seeing that. Sean McKenna back in the Twin Cities in the IR, injured reserve left, six foot eight. And so these guys have grown quite a bit. I've grown too, but I haven't grown up. I've grown out. <laughs> that's, that's been the best since hey, I quit. That's just gravity working <laughs> against you, buddy. Vishnevsky shot and a save. Sean O'Donnell. That's why you're safe for this season right up here next to me. That's right. The thing is, are you safe? I, I do not think so. If early indications are anything, it is not safe to be around Tom Reed for 60 games. Now let's take a look at tonight's Treasure Island Trivia. Our first broadcast of many. Who was the last expansion team to win their first game ever? We'll give you that answer later on the show. Our Treasure Island trivia. Who was the last expansion team to win their first game ever? We told you earlier it was not the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. They lost back in 1993 on their opening night in this building to the Detroit Red Wings by a final score of 7-3. to three. Matt Cullen, Aaron Davey will take the draw to the right side of Jamie McLennan. Kriva Krasov. And the puck is there. Shot wide of the net. Big Andre Nazarov. And it flips up and over the glove of Vizhnevsky. Vizhnevsky tried to flip it over. Gaby, he does. And Nazarov, Ronquist, and Cullen. Delayed penalty forthcoming. Cullen tries to touch. And we're going to have an interference. Well, it's going to be actually a holding call. I believe that Nazarov is going to get it. He grabbed onto the stick. Of Sean O'Donnell was trying to turn to go back towards the puck, and the officials have been told, if you see any of that at all, you're going to call him with two referees.
referee system, I tell you, there's a lot of eyes out there that can call those. And watch on the boards right here. You'll see as O'Donnell turns right here. Watch the little grab right here. Well, that little grab is all it takes because the referees have been instructed. Call them and call them tight, and they certainly have done that. So Minnesota go back, goes back on the power play. Tommy, as you know, that little grab is all it takes to slow the momentum, and that was what many of the critics were saying about the National Hockey League working through the neutral zone. The guys were getting held up, and so there is a definite feeling this year that the referees are going to call things much closer, the clutching, the grabbing, the things that Mario Lemieux talked about, and we have seen a difference the last couple of seasons. We will continue to see a difference, I think, here in the new millennium. Yeah, and it can only make the game better. When you've got, when you've got the key players out there and they're trying to move in position, especially in the defensive zone, having that little grab is all it takes to throw you off a half a second and a half a second can make a difference whether the puck's in the net or not. Tamu Solani, one of those guys you were talking about, the finished flash, who has averaged 49 goals per season the last three years as a member of the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Wild are on the power play for the second time this evening, their first one of full two minutes of five-on-three hockey. Leclerc goes down hard. It's Pellerin, Dowd, and Gabrick on the forward line. Benesik at the point. And Sekaris. Sekaris wears number six. Benesik number three. Pellerin now working it from his skates. Pellerin trying to keep it in. Sekaris at the blue line. Gets it across to Benesik. Bouncing puck kept in the zone. Flip behind for Gabrick. Gabrick now gets it to Pellerin. Scott Pellerin. Across to Benesik. Good pass. Good shot. Good save by Guy Bear. On the near side, Jim Dowd loses the edge. Gives it to Gabrick. He tries to control in traffic, and Anti Alto clears with 104 remaining in the power play. Nice second effort by Jim Dallas. He got the puck. He fell down, but he still had the presence of mind to keep his stick down on the ice, even though he was down on the ice, and trying to keep the puck in the zone. Sergei Kriva Krasov, that a penalty is going to come against Minnesota. As Cone went down hard for Anaheim, and that will nullify this second power play of the night for the Wild. Well, very quickly things change, and Benesik is going to be called on the interference call. You watch right along the, the left side of your screen right here. Watch as he'll just kind of try and pick a little bit. Goes into his man. He's trying to slow him down the same time. If you're, if you're in that position, you try to get a penalty called. And so the interference call will go against Minnesota. 53 seconds remaining in the penalty to Nazarov of the Mighty Ducks. Jacques Lemaire, 11 Stanley Cups, inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1984. Eric Nelson talking to Doug Reisbrow in our pregame show tonight here on Fox Sports Net. And he mentioned how that with this coaching staff that includes Mike Ramsey, native Minnesotan, who won a national championship in 79, won a gold medal in 80, and Mario Tremblay, that you have assembled championship caliber players leading the Minnesota Wild, and that will pay dividends as time goes on. Curtis decision number four as we have four-on-four four hockey, Tom, for the next 37 seconds. Just a minute and a half remaining in the first period. Wild out shooting the Ducks 15-7. to seven. West Walls controls. Gets it back to Curtis decision Near side boards at Sean O'Donnell. O'Donnell to decision Walls gets some speed through the neutral zone. Closed off nicely by Ruslan Soleil to the near side. O'Donnell handles the pass in his skates. And now circling and looking, Jeff Nielsen. Pass shot, knocked down in front by Soleil off the stick of Jimmy Dowd. Ducks are about to go on the power play here. Two seconds remaining on their penalty, so watch out. Korea ahead to Solani. McLennan, heads up play there, clears it back to center. And Pellerin chases it down. His shot from the bad angle, controlled easily by a bear. And here comes Korea through center. Winds it up and in. Nasty Karam off the backboards. Here is Solani looking for Korea. Gets it to the point to Teverdovsky. Teverdovsky to Tamu Solani. Solani bounces it to Titov. Kuba closes the gap. Benesik in to help. Back to the point, Teverdovsky. Shot, kicked aside by McLennan. Under 30 seconds remains in the first period of play. Titov. Now to the point, Marty McGinnis with the retirement of Frederick Olison. To the point, Teverdovsky looking to the far side and Solani. Solani, top of the circle, knocked aside. Kept in at the blue line, dangerous situation, but cleared by the Wild in the final seconds of the first period will tick away. Well, the Ducks trying to get good possession so they can get the puck in good control, but the Wild have been right on top of them. Nobody really has had much opportunity to control the puck to get this shot to the target. Guy Bear spectacular. 
for the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. 16 first period saves. We are scoreless after 20 minutes of hockey. The first 20 minutes of hockey played in the history of your Minnesota Wild. We will visit with the chairman, Bob Nagley Jr. as our intermission will continue right here on Fox Sports Net. Scoreless first period here in Anaheim, but my oh my, the Wild had some great opportunities. Nonetheless, Anaheim and Minnesota tied after 20 minutes of play here on Fox Sports Net. One of the many men who made this very night happen, Mr. Bob Nagley Jr., the owner of this hockey club. And Bob, first of all, your emotions when they first dropped the puck this evening. Very exciting, Mike. I mean, it's a culmination of three and a half years of work. Bob, it's interesting watching you during the the power play, the, the Wild have two-man advantage. A little oohs and ahs on your part as you watch some of those opportunities almost become reality for a goal. I almost knocked myself out when I threw my head back and hit the, uh, hit the head rail. But yes, it was. It was a great five-on-three opportunity. And who would have thought that we would be up on the Ducks tonight, 16-9 and nine in shots. Incredible in the first period. You know, Bob, it's interesting. And you've talked a lot about dreams. We had a reception in downtown St. Paul. 900 members of the business community in St. Paul were there. You talked about phases and dreams and the realization of something big happening to somewhere who deserves it to have big, the National Hockey League returning to the upper Midwest. This is, uh, what can you say? This is the culmination of a dream, not only for us, but think of all the Minnesotans who have been saying, uh, who felt so badly when the Stars left. And now to see us doing so well, playing so well, and having a great team with kids with great character, it's how much more could you want? Bob, it was just only a win tonight. You got that right. That'd be great. Bob, it was just three years ago that they talked about NHL coming back. June the 25th, 1997, it became reality. It seemed like it was a long ways away, but boy, how quickly the time has flown. Boy, we just, we, we couldn't have done it in any less time. We needed that time to build the arena, to build the infrastructure, of the business side to, and now to build the hockey side. We needed that time. We could have used another three months. Now, Bob, tonight is historic. Wednesday night at the XL Energy Center will also be a magical evening. How do you think you'll react to the real first game in the new beautiful building in downtown St. Paul? Oh, Mike, you asked too much. <laughs> I can't project out that far. Let's just get through the second period. Uh, <laughs> but it'll be, the, I, I've said that the, the two preseason games at home were the engagement party and the wedding will be on October 11th. So it will be sensational. And so far, a wonderful marriage. And as Bob Nagley talked about, the marriage would be much better with a victory tonight here at the Arrowhead Town of Anaheim. We will continue with our first intermission, Fox Sports Net presenting Wild Hockey for the first time back to the Upper Midwest. And welcome back to the pond in Anaheim. The Minnesota Wild in their inaugural game in franchise history. Scoreless against the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. The goaltenders have been the heroes so far. Guy Bear of Anaheim with 16 saves and Jamie McLennan of Minnesota with nine. Plenty of action around the league tonight. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. The Los Angeles Kings win over Washington 4-1 to one at the MCI Center. New Jersey, they raised that Stanley Cup banner tonight and the folks at Continental Airlines Arena enjoyed it. An 8-4 winner over Miami. Montreal, Tampa Bay, and the Islanders, a 3-3 tie on the Florida Gulf Coast. The Vancouver Canucks win down in South Florida, 4-3 over the Panthers. Detroit and Edmonton, 1-1 in the third. That's in Canada. And St. Louis up north in California, leading San Jose. Nashville and Pittsburgh are going to be playing later. They are in Tokyo as the NHL continues to go global. We'll come back with first period highlights. We're scoreless in Anaheim. <laughs> Minnesota Wild Hockey on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Valvoline, instant oil change, cars, we know them, we love them. By World Destruction League, Thunder Tanks from 3DO. And by XL Energy, NSP is now XL Energy, proud sponsor of the Minnesota Wild. Now what a great first period played here at the Arrowhead Pond of Anaheim and the Wild certainly had their scoring chances. Guy Bear said he was going to be a different goaltender this year. He was excellent in the first half. A look at our Wells Fargo numbers after 20 minutes of play. Well, unfortunately for the Wild, they didn't score any goals in that first period, but the opportunities were there. Look at the shots on goal, 16 to 9. Nine of those 16 were on the power play. The chances are coming. Eventually, they'll get theirs. Jamie McLennan with a big glove save on Zaroff, and also two posts hit by Anaheim in the first period. We are scoreless, getting set for the second period after this timeout.
Harvey. Hey, Ted. That was my last one. Moving on, guys. He's dry. Thank you. Woo! For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Eat it. Make it a Bud Light. Minnesota Wild Hockey on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Valvoline, Instant Oil Change, Cars. We know them, we love them. By your local Northland Ford store. And by Army Men World War Land, Sea, and Air from 3DO. Jim Cummins, his first goal of the season, the 30 year old out of Dearborn, Michigan. One of the many free agent additions signed in the offseason by the Ducks to give them more grit, more opportunities to bang the net, something that was missing for Craig Hartsburg's team the past couple of seasons. Yeah, and you talk about grit. This is a guy also that's close to 1,200 minutes and penalties in his 10th year in the National uh, Hockey League. And he brings that grit you talk about, but also he's got that ability to get in that front of the net and use that size and use that that uh, physical presence of his to make some things happen. Loose puck goes off the side of the net. D.A. Bear as Nielsen had pressure. Here's Tamu Solani across the line. Big drive and a stick save made by Jamie McLennan. Ruslan Soleil dumps it in. Titoff behind the net. Stick handling looking for Tebrodowski. Anaheim leads one to nothing. On the goal by Jim Cummins at 3.07 of the second period of play. Oleg Tevardovsky now moves it to the near side boards. Germán Titov can't handle. Regains possession. Three on two if they hurry. Looking for a breaking Tamu Solani and the puck sails wide of the net. Flipped out of play widely by Wes Walls. And Tom, you mentioned it. That first two and a half minutes without a whistle. Anaheim all over the wild here so far. Coming up immediately after the game, a verdict in and the reaction on Marty McSorley's hit one year ago on Donald Brashear. Sports Rage, the future. Eric Karros in the studio. The National Sports Report featuring news, opinions, and highlights from a fresh perspective tonight after the game in most regions. Well, that goal is so important. But the work also, and I don't think I mentioned, was Dan, uh, Dan Bilesma, who worked so hard in behind, went down on the ice, was had the presence to get right back up and finally bring that puck up in front. And that's the reason for the goal by Jim Cummins. That big goal also, that first goal is so important. I think it's a monkey off the back a little bit and gives you a little more confidence. Now, D.A. Bear kept his team in the first period and the Wild had the five-on-three advantage and nine shots on D.A. Bear in a full two-minute five-on-three and he made some big saves. So McLennan beaten for the first time. The assist goes to Bilesma and now Dowd works from a one-love deficit. Dumps it in near side boards. Gabrick tries to play. Up ahead to LeClaire. LeClaire puts it into the neutral ice area. Here's Marty McGinnis across the line. As the net comes off, it's more as Mike LeClaire flies in to the goal protected by Jamie McLennan. Well, he flew into it. I think he has a mail also by Sakharis, who was right in close to him. And just that little tug sometimes, enough to throw the defender down. And that's what exactly happened here as LeClaire comes in. You'll watch right here. See Sakharis right beside him. You know something else happened prior to him going down. A little tug is all it takes. And if you get away with it, you make the most of it. And LeClaire, one of those players, too, that, that brings a certain pressure presence here and he's one of those power for they talk about him one thing he likes to he likes to hit he likes to go to the net and he's able to do that and find, sometimes takes an air right with him now Mike LeClaire had a good season last year early hurt his elbow never really returned to form Matt Cullen is set to take the draw for Anaheim one of Minnesota's own. And, you know, we talked in the first period about Matt. He's from Virginia, Minnesota. He's a draft pick in 96 of the Ducks in the second round, fourth season in the National Hockey League. So he takes the draw against Aaron Gavey. Jason Marshall at the point has it for Anaheim. Nicholas Havlitt shot into traffic and kicked out of play by Jamie McLennan. Now, don't forget, single game tickets are still available for most wild home games in a variety of ticket categories. Visit the XL Energy Center box office or call Ticketmaster at 651-989-5151. Opening night Wednesday against the Philadelphia Flyers in the brand new XL Energy Center. You know, as, as Bob Nagley Jr., the chairman 
of the Minnesota Wild said that was just the engagement. The wedding happens Wednesday night against the Philadelphia Flyers. And the common misconception, Tom, is that there are not good seats available at the X, but there are many. So contact Ticketmaster or the XL Energy box office. Here's the shot off the side of the net by Cam Stewart. That first game, they don't, they don't have too many tickets up, but there's lots of tickets for the other games upcoming. No question about it. Matt Cullen is in now. Over 15,000 season tickets sold, but still plenty of good seats available for many Minnesota Wild home dates here in 2000-2001. To the neutral zone area, Jason Marshall had it picked away. Here come the Wild, across, Kreva Krasa, bouncing puck, couldn't get a good shot away. Good defensive play made by the Ducks. And a penalty forthcoming. Interference will be the call. Both referees indicating that they might have a call. Let's see what transpires. Well, Aaron gave had a great opportunity to get the puck across. And Krasa Krasov could not really get in the position where he wanted to be. Everything started to slow down just a little bit as the puck came across. But on the ensuing play, it will be a penalty that will go against Anaheim. Marshall goes for interference. You watch right here. Gaby goes right to the pipe right here. And he's just taken out of the play and knocked away. Remember, the officials have been told that if he's not near that puck at all and he's interfered with, call it. And that's what has happened here. So the Minnesota Wild will go on a power play once. Once again, they trail in this game, one nothing. Sergey Krivokrasov, one of the gunners on this hockey team. He will sit in the early part of the power play opportunity. Wild have put good pressure on the Ducks when they have had power plays. This is the fourth power play of the night for Minnesota. Maxim Suzinski, Scott Pellerin, Jim Dowd, Sakaris, and LeCision now on this power play unit for Minnesota. Dowd. Gets it into the zone. Watsuszynski on the back post. All read nicely by the Ducks. Good defensive play by Patrick Traverse. Here is Suzinski. Flips it down to Dowd. Back to Suzinski. Shot deflected wide. Dowd has it now. Looking to the near side. Suzinski, number 20. To Curtis LeCision. And the puck cleared out by Anaheim. We watch a quick move by the wall right now. Szczynski with a couple of good chances. They're trying to get the shot to the target. Same time making the long pass. Pellerin. Down. Back to Scott Pellerin. Pellerin gets it down. Jim Dow to Curtis LeCision. Across to Sepris. One time bouncing shot. Wide of the net. Havlet flies it off the glass and clears. 105 remaining in the man advantage for Minnesota. Last year, the Ducks dead last in the National Hockey League in their penalty killing efforts. 28th in a 2018 league that has expanded to 30 with the addition of Columbus and the Minnesota Wild. Davey flips it in. Cam Stewart gives chase. Puck in front. A bear wisely holds on. Now, no loose puck right there is. Davey was coming in trying to get around the net minor to get to the puck, but very adeptly taken out by the Ducks defense. Watch a bear. Look how he will put, get in tight to that pipe. And all of a sudden, the puck comes across. Gaby coming right here. But a, defend, a defender's job in that situation is to make sure if that puck's in that crease area, you look for men. Don't worry about where the puck is. Let the goaltender take care of the puck. And that's exactly what happened there as Gaby was pretty well handled, kept to the outside, and well away from where the uh, disc was lying. So Gaby will take the face off here against Matt Cullen. Cam Stewart, the pile up, the puck is on Gaby's stick, and Minnesota controls. Kreeper Krasov to the point, Bombardier, back to Sergei Kreeper Krasov, Ruslan Soleil was there, and Cullen spins and gets it back to center. With 27 seconds left in the power play. Quick turnaround by Cullen, that's what he wanted to do, rather than going deeper into his own end, just make that quick turn and get it out over the blue line. Near side, Kreeper Krasov crosses the line, stops at the top of the circles. Looks across. Puck bounces right over the stick of Aaron Gavey. Now Gavey has it. Back to the point. Bombardier and Gavey work the left side. Bombardier shot deflected. In front off an Anaheim stick and wide of the net. Philip Kuba. Penalty is coming up. And I believe it is going to go against Anaheim time. Well, the Wild have been uh, given some opportunities here. It's going to be a slashing call that will go against 
And Hyman, once again, that's going to be Soleil who's going to go. Watch here. Watch for number 24. Right here. There's the slash right there. Remember, their officials have been told any slash above the waist, they're going to be called. And that is the case. So another power play is coming up when we come back. If you needed money to make money, how soon could you get it? It's 7 a.m. Is your money where you want it to be? Is there a smarter way to get where you're going? Banks were the first stage. Wells Fargo, the next stage. College Football Saturday on NSC. It's a Conference USA showdown as David Garrard leads East Carolina against Memphis. Plus, the Beavers look to shut down Marcus Tuyasasopo and the high-powered Huskies. It all kicks off with the pregame show, Saturday on MSC. Join Matt Vaskirgen and Lisa Guerrero on Sports Geniuses. We are a multimedia machine. It's the nightly game show that tests your sports IQ. The finest coffee in all of game show land. Sports Geniuses, weekdays at 5 on MSC. He's been voted the most powerful on-air personality in sports. He's larger than life. Sparked a passion. He's taking the country by storm. Power play number five for the Wild. A full two minutes of man advantage time. Jeff Nielsen, Stacy Roos, Antti Laksinen on the ice in the forward line. Sekaris and Benesik at the point as the power play opportunities roll on here in the first 30 minutes of this contest. Reaching nearly the midway point, 11.50, remaining in the second period of play. Jim Cummins is first of the year from Dan Bilesma at 3.07 of the second period, the only scoring so far. Nielsen, the former duck, and the puck cleared the length of the ice. Well, right now what's happening is the Wild being a little, a little bit too cautious with that puck in that power play. They're trying to make the perfect pass, and as a result, it's not going. They don't have the speed, and the Ducks are just jumping all over them, taking the puck away from them. Stacy Roost gets it ahead. Good give and go. Working his way into the zone is Laxinen. Laxinen flips it over Bilesma. Benesik all the way deep into the offensive zone. Jason Marshall now to the near side. And the Ducks trying to clear it out. Can't do so. Havlid chased it, now flipped on the back end by Marshall. The young man out of Cranbrook, British Columbia, and sent down the length of the ice. Benesik leaves it now with 42 seconds left in the man advantage. Ford Dowd, Traverse. And he'll flip it back in. Well, having problems right now in their passing game also, and as a result, they're not getting the attack. But they're trying to get on this power play with just under 30 seconds remaining with a man advantage. So Matt Cullen on the forecheck makes Dowd work a little longer to get it into the neutral zone. Here's Jim Dowd. Dowd, good cross ice pass. Gabbert, high shot over the net. Karam's off the glass. Cullen trying to clear. And now Vishnevsky will have an opportunity to flip. And the precious seconds of a man advantage situation ticking away here. Five seconds left in the power play. Bombardier trying to go coast to coast. Hits it deep into the zone. Bombardier leaves it behind the net. Pellerin has it. Looking for Kriva Krasov. And here come the Ducks up ahead. Oh, Timo Solani just missed Ruslan Soleil with a forward pass. Now Havlid. And Bombardier whips it around the far side boards. Jim Dowd just missed getting it from Scott Pellerin and Teverdovsky. 19 shots for the Ducks, 18 shots for the Wild. Korea. Well, make that 20 shots on goal against Jamie McLennan. 0 for 5 on the power play, and the Wild trail by 1. Electricity is good, but it can also hurt you. I think you need to call to see if there's a wire there. So when you dig, you don't hit the power lines. I want my family to be careful. I just want them to be safe around it. I, I just don't want them to get hurt. Every morning on the way to work, Greg tells you about his new RX 300. 
the wood and leather wrapped steering wheel, the Lexus DVD navigation system, the vehicle skid control, the 220 horsepower VVT IV6. Back here in Anaheim, the Mighty Ducks have a 1 0 lead in the second period. Craig Hartsburg, the Mighty Ducks coach, hoping to reverse history tonight. Anaheim has never won a season opener. They are 0 and 7. And Mike and Tom, they're one of only three teams in the NHL to have never won an opener. The other two are, new, are Atlanta and Nashville. Back upstairs. Now that will help with those working on our trivia question at home. Expansion teams winning their opener. Eric with a little hint there. Atlanta losing last year at Phillips Arena to the New Jersey Devils. And the first ever game played for the Thrashers. Tevardovsky, Tito, fancy move in front. Cam Stewart now has it for Minnesota. Ruslan Soleil controls 938. Remaining in the first period of play. The 90s has been a decade of expansion in the National Hockey League. And it goes into the 21st century with two new teams this year. And the NHL done for a while with 30 franchises, including Minnesota and Columbus. Nashville and Atlanta last year gave the offside. So Eric gave a little hint there, Tom, a moment ago for our Treasure Island trivia. And it has to do with expansion situations. This is the first ever game played by the Wild. So we ask you, who was the last expansion team to win their first game ever? And the answer? The Ottawa Senators, who beat the Montreal Canadiens 5-3 to three back in 1992, ironically, Florida almost made the playoffs their first year. Ottawa only won 10 games in their first season, but yet they won on opening night. Right, and you look at them right now, how well they have come over those years. I mean, they started off very, very uh, poorly in, in the early early goings of their franchise, but I'll tell you, they have built a tremendous team there. You know, Marshall Johnson, who is the general manager there, has a, a pretty good hockey club. And I'll tell you, they are a team that really has picked up the pace over the last couple of years, and they've got some fine talent. But that that's what comes with the expansion. You've got to build from your draft. That's where it is. And so, uh, Gabrick, as we talk about being a franchise player, one of those guys will make things happen down the road. Loose puck in front, shot off the side of the net by Laxanen. Now it's Curtis Lecision. Lecision off a shin pad, and the Ducks' Marty McGinnis now controls. Vizhnevsky, Laxanen. And McGinnis gets it over to LeClaire. LeClaire had two goals in the preseason in the game against the Minnesota Wild. Big save made by the glove of Jamie McLennan on the shot by Antti Alto. Tonight, a first. Tomorrow, a second. And LeClaire looking for a good opportunity. Well, he does. Watch a little pass right here. Right around the defense and right to Alto, who comes in. Once again, the quick glove of the goaltender. No question that Jamie McLennan has certainly been on his game. Antti Alto. Had the confrontation here in this building in the preseason with Sean O'Donnell. Cost Sean six games of the preseason. But Alto is one of these guys who has the talent for Anaheim and will try to find the back of the net more than he did seven times last year. Big Matt Johnson in the lineup tonight. He understands what expansion is about coming from the Atlanta Thrasher situation. Roost looking for the puck. Nazaro. Fires it towards McLennan. He sticks it aside. Johnson gets it ahead to Stacy Roost. Now Roost and flipped up by Maxim Suzinski. Kept in by Suzinski. Suzinski, top of the circle. Oh, looking for Roost. Puck is still free. In front, D.A. Bear freezes it. Suzinski trying to make something happen. Well, once again, you've got to control your own zone, and that's what happens here as a defenseman. Nicholas Havlin had the puck deep. All of a sudden, he gave it away. Suzinski doing a good job of trying to get right back into the fold here, bringing the puck to the center of the ice, then going right towards that net. Here's a quick pass across. Now, he, this is a give-and-go situation. It comes back, but you can see just kind of moving around there a little bit as everybody comes back into the fold, and no one can get good wood on it. Zinski, one of those players, does not speak any English at all. It's been tough communicating, but I tell you, he understands this game. And once a drill start on ice for practice or anything else, he knows how to play the game. Very he, small, but I tell you, he is lightning quick. Yeah, he's one of the surprises, Tom, because some of the more notables did not make the opening night roster for the Minnesota Wild because of the play by guys like Matson Zuzinski and also Marion Gabrick. Well, Zuzinski also coming back from the appendix operation, right. so he missed a lot of the training camp. Tied for the scoring honors in the preseason, did Suzinski. Gabrick had 
perhaps the most scoring chances, but Suzinski speaks no English, has a translator in town right now, does have his family in the Twin Cities area, and that's where the hockey talk takes over. Stacy Roost will point one place or another. Maxim will go there, and generally he will get there quickly. Kuba shot swept aside. Korea, Pellerin, and now Korea. Gabrick pokes it off his stick. Ruslan Soleil. And kept in by Scott Pellerin. Loose puck in front. Dowd fires it towards net. It was played with a high stick, and the whistle sounds. Well, Dowd trying to get that quick jump on the puck to get there, but the official had the indication for the high stick right away. Now, tomorrow night, the Wild travel to the Valley of the Sun to take on Jeremy Roenick and the Phoenix Coyotes. Coverage begins with the pregame report immediately after the Gopher hockey season opener in the Twin Cities. Exciting times as tomorrow we come your way at 8.30 for the pregame, but there's no way we'll cut into the third period of the Gophers and Dave Poulins fighting Irish of Notre Dame as the Gophers open their season tomorrow night at the brand new XL Energy Center in St. Paul. Exciting for them to have the opportunity to do that. Puck in deep. Pellerin tried to work it. Here come Tamu Solani and Paul Correa. This is dangerous. Solani across the line. Tverdovsky has it offsides called. Oh boy, that was dangerous. And Correa with that great burst of speed also. He and Solani, they don't even have to look to see where each other is. They know just by playing together for so long. And the captain. And his counterpart questioning the call, but nonetheless, nonetheless, that will bring the face off just outside. Look at the seasons these guys had one year ago. Number five and number six, respectively, in the National Hockey League in total points scored. The problem, Tommy, is that the production, especially the goals, fell drastically after that dynamic duo. Well, you can take those two guys with Ruchin in the center. They uh, accounted for 94 goals between the three of them, with Ruchin getting 19. The other 18 forward only has 80 goals total. So that's what Craig Harsberg is trying to instill in this team, that we have got to get other players stepping up and getting some goals, not putting all the pressure on just one line. Because a lot of teams will tell you, you know, if you can shut this line down, you have a good chance of winning those games. Well, they have said that pretty much since these two were united five years ago with Solani coming over from Winnipeg. Never made it to Phoenix, came to Anaheim, Teton. As Traverse, he'll give it to Patrick Traverse. He wears number three. Traverse ahead looking for Korea. Korea and Solani have been somewhat silent, but still the Ducks lead the Wild one to nothing on the goal by Jim Cummins at 3.07 of the second period. 6.35 remains. 21 shots for the Ducks, 19 for the Wild. Vizhnevsky, Wilds went after him. Pocket center, far side, Cam Stewart. Ahead to Nielsen, flipped ahead. Chased down by Patrick Traverse. Traverse last year played in Ottawa. Fourth NHL season. Solani goes down hard. Kriva Krasov giving him a bump. Now O'Donnell working. Looking for Kriva Krasov. Kriva Krasov shot well wide of the net. And flipped and cleared by the Ducks. Sergei Kriva Krasov had lots of time and could not get a good shot away. Solani angered by the bumping. Kriva Krasov working in. Puts it in front of the net. Bouncing puck shoveled wide. Cam Stewart now digs for it. Behind the net, he gets it to Gaby. Gaby looking for Kriva Krasov. Kept in by Cam Stewart. Wild players are active on the forecheck. Well, they are. There's no question. The effort is here right now. They're getting some chances, but not as pro tight in as they want to be. Gaby, good shot. Good save by D.A. Bear. Through the neutral zone, Bilesma. Long shot. Stopped in front by Curtis Lecision. He bodies it. Cummins now. And Johnson now controls. And a whistle and a stoppage and a penalty when we come back. Ducks one, wild nothing here on Fox Sports Net. Well, the 31-year-old defenseman, first decision will pick up the penalty for Minnesota right here. We'll watch, he's gonna pick up a roughing call and as a result of that, the wild will be shorthanded for the third time in this game. Power play unit will be Marty McGinnis and Oleg Teverdowski at the point. Ron Quist, LeClaire, and Cullen 
Now, Marty McGinnis is playing the point on the power play. Frederick Olison retired. He was a big power play contributor to Craig Hartsburg's team the last couple of seasons. McGinnis is at the point. He's a forward normally. He's there with the second forward line right now because Korea and Solani were just out on the last shift. LeClaire working in traffic. Gets it to Ronquist. Runquist. Top of the dots. Big shot wide of Jamie McLennan behind the net. Chased down quickly by Cullen to Runquist. He has Tevardovsky. Gets it back towards the net instead. Cullen now working it to McGinnis. McGinnis to Tevardovsky to Runquist. Jonas Runquist. Shot in front. Save. Rebound. Score! Matt Cullen. A power play goal. The Minnesota native scores against the Minnesota Wild. to move the puck on the outside. You watch right here. All of a sudden, the shot is taken by Runquist. It goes in. And Cullen following up with a play just follows right through there. Everything's on the outside. They're trying to keep it, trying to get the wild to break the box. But finally, there's an opening here. Runquist takes a shot. Get the shot to the target. You see LeClaire standing there? But all of a sudden, in comes Cullen. No one able to get to him. And finally, it just puts it away to give them a 2-0 lead on the power play. And the Wild have done a pretty good job to this point, and everything seemed to be on the outside, and that's exactly how the Wild were trying to force it to keep the play out there. But finally, when the puck comes in that, Matt Cullen makes it home and gives his team a 2-0 lead. Former member of the hockey team at St. Cloud State, Matt Cullen, last year with 13 goals, gets a power play goal at 15-26 of the second period. First power play goal of the night for either team, and the Ducks lead two to nothing. And Craig Hartsburg told me this morning with the power play, he wanted to keep it simple, get shots from the point, some rebounds, throw it at the net, and that's exactly what happened a moment ago, Tom. So it is two to nothing as Anaheim has the lead. Take a look at our Northland Ford game summary with 418 remaining here in the second period. Antti Laxanen gets the Wild's first ever shot 30 seconds into the game. The Wild with 10 shots, 0 for 5 with the man advantage tonight. Jimmy Cummins goes in the books as the first official scorer in here in the second period. Just four shots on goal for the Wild. Our Northland Ford game summary. Cullen hoping to improve on those 13 goals from one season ago. To the point, it's Curtis LeCision. Tevardovsky gets there first. Solani. Korea's on the left wing. Titov sees Solani. He works his way past Krivo Krasov. And Krivo is going to work to the penalty box. And Anaheim will have another power play chance. Now, it's one of those players you've got to pay tight attention to, and that was the referee at the back that made that call. But nonetheless, Minnesota will be shorthanded once again. That's not what they were looking for. But Shane Heyer, who was well behind the playmaking, the call, watch right here, goes in, and the stick gets just enough. And they've been told that if they make that call, then call it. And Grisha Krasov not happy with the call, but nonetheless, he heads to the penalty box right now. Solana, you cannot give him any room at all. He has got lightning speed. Here's your out coming across there to pick him up. So power play number four for the Ducks as they scored on the last man advantage opportunity. McGinnis will work the point again to the same power play unit on with Mike LeClaire. Jonas Runquist and Matt Cullen to the point. There's McGinnis. Here's Tevardovsky. Fakes the shot, gives it over to the near side boards. Runquist there. Top of the circle. Feeds it to Cullen. Looking in front. Loose puck bouncing. Pellerin can't clear. Kept in at the blue line by McGinnis. Anaheim in the white. They control to the point of McGinnis. Across to Tevardovsky. Tevardovsky down low to Runquist. 
Runquist now at the circle. One time blast deflected in front. McLennan holds on. Well, they're trying to get that puck back to Trevor Dossie. No question, he can shoot it. Runquist doing a nice job of getting the puck to that position back to the defender, defenseman who just takes that firepower and uses it well. Watch right here. Watch how flat the puck is. Coming across, all of a sudden, Trevor Dossie just fires it. Look at the deflection also. Leclerc standing right in front, and McLennan had to be quick to be able to get across in time. He doesn't have much of a chance there. He's just trying to get his body in the way of it as best he can because he knows with those players standing there, those deflections, you got to position yourself properly. And Craig Harsberg, you mentioned before, he has got, didn't have his big line out there, but he had the guys who made it work before for him. He put them out there for that second chance. He was talking about last night, 50-plus power plays in the NHL, only 11 power play goals. He said too often teams get too cute on the power play. Keep it simple. And that's what the Ducks did with that second line a moment ago. They scored at 15-26 with Cullen by pounding the net. They lead 2 to nothing. 3:07 remains. And out of the zone comes West Walls. Walls across. Looking himself, working in on D.A. Bear. And a bear makes a save. Now back the other way, Solani. Solani McGinnis. Teverdowski the drop pass. Looked for Korea, missed him. And up ahead of the play, Nielsen couldn't come away with it. Jeff Nielsen flips it into the Anaheim zone. Boy, had the decision made that pass just a little bit harder, it would have been a two-man breakaway with Nielsen bringing in the puck. Teverdowski fired in by Marty McGinnis. Rolls around the near side. Korea tries to play. Sekaris, Davey. And now Nielsen gives chase. Jeff Nielsen trying to regather a stick, having trouble. Korea on the near side. Couldn't handle the quick pass from Nicholas Havlid. Havlid now on the right side point. Solani controls the puck. Solani waiting, waiting, looking for Germán Titov. Titov back to Solani. Solani shot, pad save, rebound. Pounding the net again are the Ducks. And McClennan makes a couple of saves. Nielsen able to clear out, and the penalty time expires. Well, you just watch a player like Solani and also Korea moving that puck so well to each other, knowing exactly where they're going to be. Vladislav Kohn had it taken away. Pellerin stick handling in traffic. Scott Pellerin looking for it. Jim Dow. Scott Pellerin work it. Kriva Krasov in front. Pinching in. Shot by Bombardier. And it trickles wide of the net. Minute and a half remains. Up ahead, Paul Correa. Top of the circles. Big shot, pad save. And the rebound cleared aside. Now Gabrick is ahead of the play. Bombardier. Wild have the numbers if they hurry. Here is Dowd. Dowd circling behind the net. Has Kuba at the point. Gets it over to Philip Kuba. Kuba shot in front, deflected wide of the net. And Bombardier has it. Bombardier. Deep, it's Peller and shot. They score! Marion Gabrick, the 18-year-old rookie, has scored the first ever goal in Minnesota Wild history. What a play it was also. Gabrick coming in there. Coming just off the bench a few moments ago. There's the initial shot as it goes off of the far side. But the Wild are able to keep it in. And that's the key right there. Making sure your defense are moving up. And all of a sudden, the pass comes right out in front. Watch here by Pellerin. He just makes it behind the back pass. Right out of the stick. And it's fitting, isn't it? The first goal by the first draft choice ever of the Minnesota Wild. It's in the net. And we've got a close game with the Wild just trailing by one. Tom, we talked earlier that the four check had been very good by this Minnesota Wild team and Marion Gabrick at 18:59 of the second period of play scores the first ever goal in Minnesota Wild history and what a change of complexion to this game now that it is two to one Wild try to pour it on here in the last 30 seconds as O'Donnell dumps it in Sushinsky on the four check decision retreats with Alto on him Leclerc can't control. Flip towards Suzinski. Maxim Suzinski waits, gets it to the point. Locking in, let's a drive and a save made by D.A. Bear. Oh, good shot coming from the point position. Curtis decision keeping the puck nice and low as you look at the man who scored the first goal ever in the history of the Minnesota Wild. 
Marion Gambrick, and I tell you, that is a big goal for them. Watch the play once again. Right here, the puck getting kept in the zone. Nice little pass by Szczynski, right back to the big defenseman. And he makes no mistake as Lecision gets the puck right to the net. But look at a bear also able to see that puck coming all the way in. All the defenders, defensemen, and so on, moving everyone out of the way. Marion Gambrick. The word is, be patient. He has all the skills. Where's number 10? Reminds us at times the way he skates of Pavel Bore. He is in the books. The future scores the goal here in the present. Pellerin and Dowd get the first assists. The goal comes at 18.59, 15 seconds remaining in the period. Kriva Krasov now fires it, and Bear holds it again. What a key goal late as the four check paid off. The peskiness all night long of Pellerin and Dowd have given scoring opportunities to guys like Gabrick and Kriva Krasov. Well, the thing is, you know, you, you can't let up at all. When, when your team will falter somewhat in the offensive department, you've got to have that much more determination in going into the offensive zone, trying to force the uh, opponents into those mistakes. And uh, Pellerin made a great play in from behind the net. And the one thing with Jacques Lemaire, when you watch his practice, how quickly the players move the puck from one stick to the other. Face off controlled by Anaheim. Kept in at the blue line by the Wild. Now behind the net, it's Oleg Tevardovsky. And the final seconds will tick away. The Anaheim Mighty Ducks 2, the Minnesota Wild 1. Marion Gabrick, number 10, will go into the record books as he has scored the first goal in Minnesota Wild history. Peskiness by Pellerin and a finish by Gabrick. It's 2-1 after two. We have completed two periods here at the Pond in Anaheim and the Minnesota Wild trailing the Ducks 2-1. Here's the man who will be a trivia question answer someday. Who scored Minnesota's first ever goal? Marion Gabrick, talk about that goal that came minutes ago. You know, it was a great work of uh, my teammates, Jimmy Dowd and uh, Scott Pellerin. And, and Scott uh, did a great pass to me and uh, I, uh, I uh, shot it and uh, it was in the net. So I'm very happy. But, but uh, it's very uh, a difficult game and I hope that we'll uh, win this game. You have a chance to win it. What do you need to do in the third period? You know, uh, we had uh, a lot of uh, power plays and I think that uh, we have to improve it and I hope that uh, uh, we'll go, we'll score more goals. So uh, keep shooting and, uh, and uh, it, it, will, uh, it will go in the net. So I hope that we'll, we'll win this game. All right, good luck in the third period. Marion Gabrick, thanks for stopping by. It is two to one in favor of Anaheim after two. We'll have scores and highlights coming up. Now, different game right now as the Minnesota Wild close out the scoring at the end of the second period. Marion Gabrick puts the Wild on the board. Welcome back to Anaheim. Mike Goldberg here on Fox Sports Net. Perhaps the biggest story other than welcoming the Wild into the National Hockey League on this Friday night is the ruling that was handed down in Vancouver, British Columbia today as Marty McSorley was found guilty of charges of assault on Donald Brashear. The result, 18 months probation. If all goes well for Marty McSorley, his record will be cleared. But a statement was made in the courts of law in the country of Canada today, and we asked our captain, Sean O'Donnell, what this could do to the future of hockey and violence within. Well, I mean, I'm, I still believe that, um, you know, he is guilty. I, I think what he did was wrong, and I think Marty, you know, I know Marty a little bit, and I've spoken to him about it, and he realized what he did was wrong. Um, I still don't know whether or not the outside People should have should have gotten involved, but I mean that's that's Canada. Um, yeah, I think it will affect some of the players. I think the next time that someone, you know, is angry if they get if they get hit or they feel they were you know unjustly hit or or, or abused out there and they want to get you know go back and get some payback, I think it will be in their back of their mind. Which if 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 that's what comes out of it, then that's a good thing. You know, you want guys, you know, maybe getting revenge or getting some payback, but within the limits of, of what's good taste and, and the rules of the game. So if that does stay in the players' minds, then, then maybe this all uh, wasn't a bad thing. You know, interesting perspective shared by Sean O'Donnell. The game, they said, always used to police itself, but still, if in the back of the minds is fair play, you also agree that's a good thing. Absolutely. There's no question, Mike, that uh, sometimes you have to go outside the, the boundaries to make sure things are going to be right. And I think that certainly has sent a statement to the National Hockey League 
league and the league certainly does not condone what has happened here but also to the coaches when they put players on the ice what's the purpose of them being on the ice in certain situations so it's the players it's the coaches everybody I think gets the message loud and clear it's a shame after a very long and very good career that Marty McSorley becomes the man of the moment here but yet a statement made for the future and that will be good for the game of hockey we'll step aside from here in Anaheim the wild trail the ducks 2-1 after 2 on Fox Sports Net Getting set to start the third period of play. Mighty Ducks lead the Wild 2-1. to one, And it was an unlikely source to get the scoring started here in the first ever game. Big Jim Cummins crashing the net. Oh, you watch Bilesma. He makes a play there by getting possession of the puck and finally getting out in front. Cummins just comes in, and he just keeps battling away and finally comes in to give him a 1-0 lead. And then Minnesota's own Matt Cullen on the power play made it 2 to nothing Anaheim. Late in the period, Marion Gabrick. But look at the work on the wall here, Tom, from Scott Pellerin. Absolutely. He made the good play here. Dow good hook up the other assist, but Pelham just took that little quick pass. And look at the quick stick also of Gabrick. As that puck comes on the stick, we've been talking about how quick he is. He puts it away. So write it down. It's official. 18:59 of the second period. Gabrick from Pellerin and Dowd. Third period when we come back. Minnesota Wild Hockey on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Treasure Island Resort and Casino. Bigger, better, more tropical than ever. By Wells Fargo, the next stage. And by Dodge and your friendly Dodge dealer. The beautiful Arrowhead Pond of Anaheim as we take a look at our Valvoline second period stats. Well, certainly this was a period that uh, Anaheim's even controlled just a little bit more than the Minnesota Wild did. You look at the goals that were scored, double by Anaheim, shots on goals in this game, 27 to 25, but good scoring chances by Minnesota, 8 to 5 in that department, but the power players, where they have followed, that's where they have got to pick it up. Solani, fanned on the shot, penalty forthcoming. And slash will be called. Well, once again, the players are learning that they are going to call every time they get a chance that the referee, if there's any type of a slash, they will call it. And that is going to be West Walls, who's called in the defensive zone. You watch him close to the glass right here. Right here. Also, he comes off the glass, and there's the little slash. And the referees are instructed, call it immediately. They have done that in this hockey game. So it will be the fifth power play of the night for Anaheim. They scored the power play goal in the second period as Walls goes down 15 seconds into the third period for slashing. Jacques Lemaire's team trails 2-1. to one. This is an important part of the game right here as Anaheim will look to regain that two-goal cushion. Titoff, Solani, McGinnis, Korea, Kevardovsky. Well rested and on the ice. Jimmy Dowd is ahead of the play. Working shorthanded. Shot never gets away. And no penalty called as Dowd was chased down. Here comes Solani back the other way. Ducks stay on side. Left for the near side and Paul Correa. Correa behind the net to Germán Titoff. Titoff in front. Gaby can't clear. McGinnis now has it. McGinnis to Correa. Back to Marty McGinnis. Correa on the near side. McGinnis drive in front. There's traffic. Here's O'Donnell. Flips it nicely. Heads up play and Pellerin clears. And a little pass is all it took. Getting it right on the stick of Pellerin. He just has an extra second to get it all the way down the ice. And Berdovsky headmans. Leclerc. Titoff will work his way off. So will Solani. And here comes Matt Cullen's line. The second line of this team. One minute, three seconds left on the penalty to West Walls. Here's Marty McGinnis. McGinnis steps past Vladislav Benesic. Cullen crashing the net. Now works it behind back to the near side. McGinnis in from his point position. Leclerc trying to apply pressure. Mike Leclerc behind the net. Moving in front is Cullen. Shot save made by Jamie McLennan. Kept in nicely at the blue line by Marty McGinnis. McLennan tries to keep it alive. McGinnis keeps it in again. Shot fired in front, deflected into the pads of Jamie McLennan. And just as Craig Hartsburg talked about this morning, Tom, this second unit on the power play, keeping things simple for Anaheim. Well, they have done that. And you're going to watch Tidoff that's also in front of the net here. But McLennan had the puck 
and had a chance. Earlier on, it was Dowd who had the opportunity here. Watch right here. He's starting to rush away. All of a sudden, that's going to be Deverdoski who gets up there, grabs a piece of him, pulls him down. No penalty on the play. All of a sudden, it comes back into the Minnesota end. Right here, McClellan had good presence to hold on the puck, but then he gave it away in his own zone. Even the goaltenders are guilty of that at time. Here's the play right here. But Watt standing right in front. McClellan standing there looking for something, and McClellan is able to vindicate himself by able to keep that puck from going back in. But a good opportunity for the Mighty Ducks. Yeah, if Jamie's going to do that, Tom, as you well know, you have to clear the puck. If not, you're better off to stop, regroup, and take the face off in your own end. Absolutely. And so many goaltenders today want to handle the puck more. When you watch a bear, he will not handle it at all. He'd rather just have the puck go around the net. He doesn't handle it very well. And he doesn't want to take the chance of getting out of that net. McClellan a little bit different. He likes to get control once in a while, try to shoot it down the ice and help out his defensive units. Korea on a double shift on the power play unit here. Cleared into the wild bench right towards Mike Ramsey. Paul Korea, the captain of this hockey team from Vancouver, British Columbia. He was the first pick of the Ducks back in 1993. Last year banged up, had a hip, had a heel injury, but still scored 42 goals. He has scored the six most goals in the NHL the last five years. And twice he's won the Lady Bing. Yeah. In, in the six years he's played, he's only had 117 minutes of penalty. That tells you something about him. For So for him to pick up a one-game suspension for the slash is uh, very unusual. But nonetheless, uh, that was the, the case. Yamir Yager led the league in scoring last year, 96 points. Pavel Bure, a great season, a full season with the Florida Panthers. And how about the year Mark Recchi turned in with the Philadelphia Flyers? And there you see Korea Solani, followed by Owen Nolan and Tony Amante. And we will see Mark Recchi on opening night, October 11th, at the XL Energy Center. We see Paul Korea again this evening. Well, he is fun to watch, there's no question, with the, the speed he has, the intensity. And he does not like to lose at anything. He's uh, very competitive. One of those guys, very bright guy, too. He's just a, uh, a guy who really studies the game, made the Dean's List when he's at the University of Maine. He and brother Steve, NHLer. Steve plays with the Vancouver Canucks. Vishnevsky gets it across. Big shot, all wide of the net to the near side. Kept in by Vishnevsky. Vitaly Vishnevsky, bouncing puck. Cullen tries to chase it down. Here's Nicholas Havlett. High into McLennan, he will hold on. Four seconds left on the penalty to West Walls. Nicholas Havlid. A good puck controlling defenseman is firing it at the net and seeing if the Ducks could get something to happen. Well, he's one of those premier players who uh, is from Sweden. He knows how to move the puck and he very he competes very hard. He's one of those guys also that has got great skating skills. You look at his points right now as he comes in to the Ducks from last season, but also a guy that they are looking for for the future. He's one of the, the young kids that uh, we call him at 27 years of age, and it seems more and more times that the defense will take a little bit longer to gel to get to on top of their game, and he's just about at that point right now. Puck in behind the Minnesota net. Marty McGinnis controls. Power play is over. Both teams even strength. LeClaire, loose puck in front. Davey trying to clear it. Gets it ahead. Cam Stewart able to work it to center. Davey can't control, though. He bumps into Ante Alto. And across the line comes Mike LeClaire. LeClaire just flips it towards McLennan, and once again, the wild goaltender will hold on. Now, don't forget tomorrow, a big night of hockey here on MSC, Fox Sports Net. It begins with the college hockey season beginning as the Golden Gophers of Minnesota host the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Hall of Fame game from the XL Energy Center in St. Paul. Coverage right here on MSC begins at 6 o'clock Central Time. Jeff Nielsen, former captain of the Golden Gophers, led them to the Frozen Four back in 1994. Former Duck, former Gopher, and now a member of the Minnesota Wild. You know, when you look at players like that, there's a lot of fond memories coming out of the state of Minnesota. Of course, they have developed so many players over the years that have gone on to play in the professional ranks, especially in the National Hockey League. Now you can credit both of the gold medals for the U.S. mostly to players who played in the state of Minnesota. Mike Ramsey in 1980 was one of about a dozen players from the state of Minnesota who led 
that hockey team to the miracle on ice. So Nielsen in 94 was about 15 years behind that man who won a national championship at Minnesota in 1979. Absolutely. Of course, he's one of the guys who came through the, the program right at Roosevelt, going to high school there, then out of the University of Minnesota, then finally getting the gold medal, and then just his whole career just was one of those guys who you could always look about for that leadership on the bench as a player and now behind the bench as an assistant coach. You know, they always talk about a Ruzioni's goal. How about Pavlich's assist? That's right. Against the Russians, the miracle on ice back in February of 1980. And they are gathered in front of the TVs all over the upper Midwest tonight, Tom. And you and I trying to get a feeling of what it's like for the hockey fan in the upper Midwest tonight. I hope they are enjoying this evening as much as we are enjoying being here because I'm sure that chills have gone through the spines of many passionate hockey fans throughout the upper Midwest region. Well, and you're absolutely right. And the, the one thing is that the, the Wilds have done a tremendous job of putting their arms around the entire community, not just the Twin Cities, but outside. When you get into the Rosos and the War Rose and the Grand Rapids and the, and the Duluth and, and you know, International Falls, they have been a part of that as they've been growing in these last three years, as Bob Nagley Jr. talked about. And it's been just a, a great opportunity for these youngsters to be a part of an inaugural season. First game played in the state of Minnesota back in 1895. First Gophers hockey season, 1921. Tito and a couple of Minnesota players have starred in tonight's game. One of those being on the wrong colored jersey, Matt Cullen, with a goal tonight. Well, again, we remind you that the common misconception is that you cannot see your Minnesota Wild in the XL Energy Center, but there are very good single game tickets still available. Call the XL Energy Center or Ticketmaster at 651-989-5151. The festivities will be big on the 11th against the Flyers. In fact, go online that night also as we will have the new website, the redesigned website at www.wild.com, newly designed for the home opener Wednesday, the 11th, against John LeClaire, Mark Recchi, and the Philadelphia Flyers. I had to stop myself and not say Eric Lindros. That's right. They will miss him after many years of starting with that lineup. There's a look once again at Curtis little decision. Playing in his 780th game in the NHL, and we talk about guys having the size and you know, playing the defensive part of the game. He's got that. He's very strong. He's he has uh, got that type of build that likes to play the body also. And he knows what it's like to go to a new city. You know, going from Quebec yeah. to Colorado, going from Hartford over to the Carolinas. Won the '96 Cup with the Avalanche, of course. And he is the most experienced player on this hockey team. Number four, Curtis Decision. Here's Germán Titov. Only practiced with Solani and Korea the last couple of days. But both of those guys, I talked to him this morning, Korea and Solani had nice things to say about the talents of Titov. And they also said they're anxious for Steve Ruchin to be healthy and get back into the lineup. Penalty coming. It's going to be an interference call. And the Wild should have a man advantage opportunity trailing by one goal here with lots of time remaining. Well, they will. It was Jeff Nielsen that was knocked down right in front of his own bench. He was not even close to that puck. And so this will put Minnesota on their power play once again. That's Soleil who goes to the penalty box for the interference call. Tom, what would you like to see the Wild as we take a look at the bump here on Nielsen in the interference? Yeah, right on the right side yeah. of your screen. Yeah, no question. And once again, they're going to call that so close, especially between the blue lines also. Minnesota needs to get a quick jump here on this power play. That's what you I was going right to ask you. What would you like to see them do different? Yeah, right now, they've, well, they've got to get good control here right away. Winning the faceoff is the start of it. Stacy Rose has got the, you know, those quick stick of his. Get it back, get control, and then go from there. Now there's number one, Kuba. Fires towards net. Oh, it deflected high off Guy Bear. Sekaris walks in. Flipped again. Puck advanced with the high stick. No, they'll whistle it as a bear will freeze the puck. 31 shots for the Ducks, 27 for the Wild. This is the sixth power play of the night for Minnesota. And this is what you want right here as the puck comes back to the point. All of a sudden, when you've got someone coming to you like that, you've got to make sure that you just don't try and fool around with trying to get too huge. So you want to get the puck to the net. See right here as Kuba just fires the puck right to the target area. And you're hoping there's a deflection, a rebound, anything at all that that puck goes to the net. When you trail by one, you want to make 
as many opportunities work for you as you possibly can. And you only make those things happen by shooting the puck. Wild 11% in the preseason, 6 of 53 with the man advantage. Another faceoff win. Kuba gets it back across. Sekaris. Sekaris to the far side. Suzinski. Here is Kriva Krasov. Kriva Krasov bothered by Havlin. Roost is on the ice. Kriva Krasov is down deep. Suzinski has it. Works it down towards the net. In front. Oh, couldn't pull the trigger. Runquist able to clear. A lot of skill on the ice right now with Roost and Kriva Krasov and Suzinski. Kuba. And number six, Lubomir Sekaris, 31 year old out of Slovakia. Puck turned over, flipped back in. 114 remains in this power play opportunity for Minnesota. Kuba has it on the near side, boards in his own end. Spins with Leclerc pestering him. And Sekaris bounces it off the boards. Now they work it up the near side. Stacy Roost through the neutral zone. Roost fires it around, takes an odd carom, and Traverse cannot clear. Kept in by Kriva Krasov. Now at the point, it's Brad Bombardier on the backhand, Stacy Roost. Roost to Kriva Krasov. Kriva Krasov stick handling in traffic, looking for a lane, flips it. Back over to Kriva Krasov. Kriva Krasov, Benesek. Benesek, Kriva Krasov. Waiting. Cross ice pass. Walking in. Shot. Save made by a bear. Bombardier, a good low shot. 30 seconds left in the man advantage. Puck is cleared again. Well, there's a quick stick once again by Kriza Krasov. Taking the, the stuck and just moving, looking around, spotting Bombardier on the far side to get the open shot. Pellerin fires it in. Two green jerseys crash. Here's Gabrick, has it, looking in front. Bombardier, point blank range, knocked down. Shot on net, still loose in front. And Dowd can't control. Good save made by D.A. Bear. Ladislav Cone clears to center. Power play is over. And like you saw how many times they had good possession of that puck and getting those chances again. And that's what you want to go for. You want to get the chances. The Wild have been getting that. Gabrick to Pellerin. Pellerin couldn't get a shot away. Puck moved up ahead and into the neutral zone by Anaheim. Turned right over. Jim Dowd controls for Minnesota. Dowd bounces it off the boards. Curtis Lecision quickly to Gabrick. Wild trying to catch the Ducks on a line change. Pellerin flips it in, and he'll get a quick switch. That was the best power play since the five on three time. That was the most pressure. Tabardowski. Stewart gives chase on the four check. Here's Tabardowski. Comes up the middle to Tito. And flipped right back in by Lecision. Stewart chases. Solani clears. O'Donnell tries to bump him a bit. Here's Kriva Krasov. You know, you don't have to get a lot of shots when you have those power plays either. Minnesota had three, three shots on the last attempt, and they were good opportunities. Aaron Gavey now controls. 31 shots for the Ducks, 28 for the Wild. Gavey through center. Long shot. Kicked aside by Guy Bear. Back in the neutral zone. Here's Runquist. New addition to another new addition. Andre Nazarov. Now in deep, the Ducks. Taken right off the stick by Sekaris. And Kriva Krasov tries to work it at center. The trailer is West Walls, waits for some help, gives it across the blue line. Benesek walking in, knocked down in front, fired again! Nielsen on the doorstep. And the puck is cleared to the side. Jeff Nielsen to Walls. Walls across, puck in the skate of Cullen. And just cleared out by the Ducks. Good pressure by the Wild. Nielsen, Laxinen, Walls on the ice now for Minnesota. And they're all ducking on that last uh, turn. <laughs> <laughs> Bombardier gets it ahead to Nielsen. Guy A. Bear freezes the puck. 11.48. Minnesota trails by one. Jacques Lemaire happy with what he's watching. Here in Southern California, the Ducks clinging to a one-goal lead. Karaya and Solani, are they the most dynamic duo in the NHL? The uh, Minnesota Wilds' Curtis Lecision told me before the game that they stack right up there with Colorado's Joe Sackick and Peter Forsberg, Sergei Fedorov and Stevie Eiserman in Detroit, and Joe Neuendijk and Mike Madano in Dallas. So there they are, Anaheim's dynamic duo. Now back upstairs to our own dynamic duo, Mike and Tom. Now thank you. Very <laughs> kind of you, Eric. Atomic <laughs> first Pretty game, and yeah. we already feel like we're in preseason. Oh, I know. I mean, we're, we're getting there. <laughs>
Hey, just a side note to all the fans around the upper Midwest. I will share this with you. This man next to me, Tom Reed, has been a part of that Minnesota hockey history that we've talked about. Tommy, I've said it before in private. I'm going to say it to everybody. It's an absolute honor to be working this inaugural season with you, big guy. Well, thank you. Uh, pretty exciting for me also. Let me tell you, Mike, uh, I was spending a lot of time in the last hockey league and getting a chance to, to rekindle a lot of the relationships I've had with players around the league for a long, long time. It's just a been an honor to be here. And now we just watch this expansive team as they get better and better each year. It's like walking around with the mayor sometimes with Tom Reed. You get stopped at, stopped at every door. Someone from the league is welcoming Tom Reed back. Jamie McLennan with a kick save made. Anti Alto behind the net. He's being pestered on the play. Stacy Roost working on Mike LeClaire now. LeClaire trying to body pass Roost. Strong on the stick, looking to jam it in on the near side post. McLennan put the skate tightly. Now in front, shot, score! Marty McGinnis has given the Ducks a two-goal lead. Well, LeClaire made a big effort there also, and you look at the look on the coach, Jacques Lemaire. They're doing a great job, but McGinnis is a guy who's going to get the credit for this goal. He made a nice move coming across there and giving his team a two-goal lead. Look at the effort, and that's what you look for. You look for those players who give you that second effort. McClellan makes the initial save. The puck is picked up right here by McGinnis. He comes around. All of a sudden, Sosinski goes out too far. He doesn't challenge him. And also, as he pulls away, that opens up the avenue, and he is just able to walk through right out here. You've got to take the man. Second guessing right here. All of a sudden, he just cuts in, and before anyone can get to him, he's got the puck, he's got the shot, he's got the goal. And it's 3-1 to one in favor of the Mighty Ducks. That goal coming with 11-17 to go in the third period. So Marty McGinnis scores his first of the year. He scored 28 goals the past two seasons with the Ducks. Ten of those last year, one of those here on opening night. So Marty McGinnis from LeClaire and Alto at 8.42 of the third period of play. Well, what a big goal that is for this hockey club also. With, we mentioned before they have not won an opener. They're trying to open things up here a little bit. Minnesota will come back as you watch it once again. Look how much room he had to move at. And you can see right there as Szczynski pulled one way and Minnesota was not able to get the big defenseman Kuba out there in time to get him, and that just gave him a free shot. And when you're in that tight, it's very tough for a goaltender to react that quick, especially with as much traffic in front of the net as there was. Off the draw, face-off win, Solani shot kicked aside. O'Donnell gives it to Curtis LeCision. Ten minutes, 50 seconds remaining in the third period of play. Ruslan Soleil, number 24. Brings it back to the far side boards, kept in by Jim Dowd. Here is Pellerin, Gabrick, Gabrick, a pair of tens, Tebrodovsky and Gabrick. Gabrick, waited, teet off on him. Marion Gabrick strong on the stick, looking to leave it. He does, and Jim Dowd has it. Dowd skates it to the top, fires it towards the net. Slipped aside by Soleil, Pellerin bumped into the boards nicely. And kept in still by the wild. Here's Gabrick looking on the backhand of Pellerin. Pellerin in front. Gabrick on the backhand. Oh, bad save. Made by Guillet Bear. O'Donnell fires. Gabrick tries to control. And finally, Anaheim clears. But good stick work, good cycling by that forward line led by the youngster Marion Gabrick. And good pressure. And that's what the coach is looking for in that offensive zone. Force them into making bad passes. Force them into making mistakes. And then capitalize when you get the chances. Bumping in is Curtis LeCision, working on Ladislav Kohn. Kohn flips it high. McLennan in front. He will hold on. 9.34. 9.33, pardon me, remaining in the third period of play. And Anaheim once again leads by two. Menesik lost it, Walls helps him out. West Walls, former Calgary Flame. Walks across the line, leaves it. Laxon and just fires it towards Guillet. Barry gloves it and holds on tight. 
Time now to check out what's on tap. Brought to you by our good friends at Budweiser. Tomorrow night, we play again. Let's play two and two nights. Why not? The Wild against Jeremy Roenick, Keith Kachuk, and the Phoenix Coyotes. Our pregame show with Eric Nelson begins at 8.30 or immediately following Go For Hockey. Don Lucia making the debut of Go For Hockey tomorrow here on MSC as he takes on the old flyer Dave Poulin and the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. And then we come at you for a doubleheader of hockey in the state of Minnesota, the way it should be in the upper Midwest. The college game, the WCHA, and then the NHL. And of course, Al Lucia went to Notre Dame. And maybe a little bit of uh, nostalgia there as he plays against his own, his old team. We get to watch your old partner, Frank Mazzocco and Reed Larson and the guys work Gophers hockey. I know, Tom, something you enjoyed tremendously the past half yeah. dozen or so years. And it's, it's so much fun, too, to see that team develop over the last year and what they've done. And, uh, that would once again one of the, be one of the premier teams in the college ranks. The final five will be played at the XL Energy Center. So college flavor, high school championships in St. Paul, everything is going to center around the XL Energy Center. But the management of the Wild has said they don't want it to be looked upon as the shrine of hockey, just part of the hockey tradition that exists in the state of Minnesota and the surrounding areas. I tell you that the new building though, and then you talk about energy and being the XL Energy Center, perfect name for it because there is so much energy that has been developed downtown. When you went to Rice Park and you see all the, the Snoopies and the Snoopies on parade and the with the new, the new Science Museum and everything that has taken place down there, it's just been, it has been a, a fun place to be over the last couple of years. 1940 title led by John Mariucci for the Gophers and, and we kind of tie the past to the new now and an era has officially begun as the Wild Trail 3 to 1. First game played in this NHL season for Minnesota. Nielsen, the former Duck, steps up. And now the puck moves ahead to Cullen. Kept in at the blue line momentarily by Havlid. Good pressure by Nielsen. Thrown back into the neutral zone. Now it's Kuba ahead to Nielsen. He's bumped by Havlid. They're having a little personal battle going on. Nicholas Havlid, number 28, and Jeff Nielsen of the Wild. Matt Cullen. Fires McLennan gloves and wisely holds on. Well, he was making, taking no chances there. Well, don't forget immediately following tonight's game, the National Sports Report from our Fox Sports News studios in Los Angeles. Marty McSorley, the verdict, the reaction. What will it do to the future of hockey? Sports race, the future. And Eric Carroll's in the studio, the National Sports Report, featuring news, opinions, and highlights from a fresh perspective tonight after the game in most regions. Jacques Lemaire, you saw him on the bench, looks a little bit cool and collected back there. Well, his hockey team has battled tonight. They fired 31 shots on D.A. Barrett. It might have been the first period, that five on three opportunity. All the shots in the first period where D.A. Barrett was absolutely spectacular. That was one of the early turning points in tonight's contest. And Anaheim scored two goals in the second. The Wild closed out the scoring with Gabrick at 18.59 to make it 2-1. But the Ducks got that next important goal to regain that two-goal lead. But goaltending, it doesn't matter if it's Minnesota. It can be Anaheim, too. has to be good almost every night. Absolutely. I think you're absolutely right, too, Mike. The fact that when they were able to kill off that two-man disadvantage, that was the most important thing that they could have done at that point. It took away some good scoring opportunities that Minnesota had at the same time gave the Mighty Ducks a little more confidence to kill it off. And once you do that, boy, it just seems to get the adrenaline pumping just a little bit more, which will help you down the road. 93, the last time the Ducks opened at home. They're looking for their first ever victory on an opening night in a season opener. LeClaire working the puck. He was strong on the stick on the McGinnis goal and earned himself an assist, his second assist of the night. LeClaire with a couple of points this evening for the Ducks. Kept in at the blue line. Bouncing puck, here's LeClaire. On the backhand, McLennan freezes. Now LeClaire trying to get that shot away, but a good job also by LeCision. Just knocks him down to the ice. And once again, I tell you know, the youngsters watching time and time again, when you're a defenseman in that area, don't worry about the puck. Worry about the man. The puck can't walk into that by itself. And if you can take him down, then you've taken away a scoring opportunity. There he is there. Watch right there. Just gives him that little push, allows him. Look how his position is, too. He's facing away from the goaltender, so that anybody coming into the goaltender, he'll be able to spot and get a piece of him. Now, Lecision, 31 years old, 13th 
NHL season. The third overall pick back in the 1988 draft. Nine seasons in Quebec and Colorado with that organization. And not a lot of penalty minutes in that time also. If you look, they are well under a minute per game. Get him on Titov. Titov bumped by Aaron Gavey. Gavey ahead to Kriva Krasov. Kriva Krasov has Cam Stewart. Kriva Krasov crosses the line. Bad angle, shot kicked aside by D.A. Bear. Stewart pounces on the loose puck, gets it back behind the net to Aaron Gavey. Gavey tied up, working his way around was Cam Stewart. He was draped upon, the shot trickled wide. Here's Solani. Solani crosses the line. Dumps it behind. Good back check on Paul Correa. And Solani was looking the whole time for Correa, but he was not open, so the pass was never made that way. Germán Titov now, the centerman on this line in the absence of Steve Ruchin, as we mentioned earlier. He'll miss about the first eight games of the season for Anaheim with a broken left hand that occurred in the preseason in a game against Los Angeles. Dumped in. Icing is going to be called as Havlid touches first. So we mentioned a couple of guys who were out of the lineup today. The likes of Andy Sutton, also Sylvain Bluan, and Darby Hendricks and two other members with the club are not dressed in today's game. Well, they might play tomorrow night as the Wild travel to the Valley of the Sun to take on Jeremy Roenick, Keith Kachuk, and the Phoenix Coyotes. Coverage begins with the pregame report immediately after the Gopher Hockey season opener. Wild and Coyotes tomorrow night from Phoenix. Jacques Vermeer still trying to get his line combinations together to get some firepower. Marshall. Can't keep it in at the blue line. Anti lacks in it. Jumped over his stick. Here is Marshall. This flips it aside. Here is Curtis Lecision. Bouncing puck back to center. And flipped on the backhand. Wes Wall steps through the neutral zone. Here's Laxinen, cross the line. Laxinen tried to flip it ahead, knocked down nicely in front by Jason Marshall. Marshall moves it ahead to Matt Cullen. Cullen crosses into the offensive zone. Jason Marshall, the eight-year veteran who has played his entire career with the Mighty Ducks, has done a nice job here tonight. Shot deflected aside by Jason Marshall, a stay-at-home guy who has done exactly that this evening. McGinnis has it, gets it across. Kicked ahead and across the line. LeClaire will pound in, looking for the loose puck. Can't spin. Vizhnevsky, traverse, shot, save made by Jamie McLennan. And he will hold on. The loose puck never gathered by the Wild defensive unit. And LeClaire pounding again. And McLennan finally making the save. WDL main event, Thunder Tanks in this. A newly rejuvenated Guy Bear who came into camp in the best shape of his life. He and the Ducks lead 3 to 1 over the Wild. 523 remains in the third period of play. You know, Wayne Gretzky helped hockey in Southern California which had tradition before with the Kings and Dave Taylor and the boys and Rogi Vashon, but down here in Anaheim, they have become passionate hockey fans, Tommy. The reason I bring that up, front page of the LA Times sports section today, big article on hockey returning to the Twin Cities. Yeah, absolutely, and it doesn't matter where it, it, it's going, there's no question down here in Anaheim, they certainly have taken this game to a, another level. The passion of the, the fans down here is certainly evident just by the people we saw last night when the Wild were coming into the hotel. Getting, you know, inaugural jersey sign, things such as that. In front of the net, kicked aside by D.A. Bear. That was nice to see a group of people in front of the team hotel last night in wild uniforms, well, jerseys at least. Autograph seekers are ready before the Wild had played an official first game, and they were draped in merchandise, and it was something special to see. Transplanted Minnesotans, as they told me last night, in front of the team hotel. Kriva Krasov looking, flips the shot, bounces aside to B Bear. And A Bear now looking in front. Here is Benison. Benison fires it, knocked down by McGinnis. And cleared ahead by Anaheim. Four and a half minutes now on the clock. Sekaris has it. Well, Sekaris is so good on his skates. You watch how fluid he is and just knows he's got great balance out there, good control of the puck. Long-time veteran in the Czech leagues and that European style is much more wide open. And 
If this team can play wide open at times, Jacques Lemaire might not like it too much, but if they stay responsible defensively, open it up again, they do have some skilled players to wild, like Timur Solani and Paul Correa, try to open it up from time to time for Anaheim. O'Donnell bumps Korea once and twice. Pellerin flips it up into the neutral zone. Now these two teams have fought very hard in this first game. It's very tough. And you really don't get your game legs until you get into the contest where it really means something. And these teams have gone through a very tough, difficult time in training camp, securing positions for some of the players, especially for the wild players, to be in that first team. And now they're into the, the thick of things. And you'll watch this team. They'll get better as the games go on. Solani trying to slip it across to Korea, breaking on the far post. These two teams met twice in the preseason, so they know each other as well as the Wild know any team right now in the National Hockey League. Solani leaves it for Korea. Korea now stops to the side of McLennan, tried to center the puck, looking again, shot, all oh, point blank range. Solani robbed by Jamie McLennan. Korea is so good, I tell you, when he gets that puck, he knows how to control it. But the spins he can he can do. We watch here as he makes that little turnaround and all of a sudden you think you think that you has him as a defenseman and the decision had a problem there stopping, trying to come back with him, but was able to stay in front of him. But the quick pass all of a sudden it comes right back to him and Solani. Solani just puts his head down saying, I should have had that one. But he didn't. It came once, and he just <laughs> looks at it and says, oh, I'd like to have that shot again. And you can bet that those two players will talk on the bench, and they'll give each other a little bit of a ribbing back and forth. 346 goals in the career of Tammy Solani. Third most goals in the last five years. Solani has scored in the NHL behind John LeClaire and Yamir Yager. Here's Kriva Krasov. Sent back in, good hit applied to Nicholas Havlick. Coming all the way across the ice, the gritty and always determined Cam Stewart. Cam Stewart played in the CCHA, Michigan in his collegiate career. Won a Turner Cup in Houston. Another bump. Bilesma and Bombardier collide. And here comes Jason Marshall. Marshall works it ahead nicely. Jonas Runquist. Runquist fires it to the side of the net. Matt Cullen from Virginia, Minnesota. Here's Bombardier. Cullen has scored a goal. Bombardier flips it in for the Wild. Two and a half minutes on the clock. The first ever game played in the history of the Minnesota Wild. Benesik tries to get the loose puck. Leclerc on him. Behind the net, Leclerc. Pounced upon by Sekiris. And picked up now by Ladislav Benesik. He flips it up ahead. And icing called on the Wild. Let's go downstairs, check in with Eric Nelson. Well, gentlemen, you know, since the last time we saw the NHL, 93, when the North Stars left, the average attendance in the league was just over 14,000. In that seven-year span, league attendance has risen to over 16,000 per game. So they say it's the coolest game on ice, and the attendance figures would bear that out. Back upstairs. Well, they have been successful with hockey here in Southern California since day one. The first season for the Mighty Ducks, they averaged 16,989 fans in a 17,000-plus building here, the Arrowhead Pond of Anaheim. Missed the playoffs that year, but they won 33 games, which isn't bad for an expansion team when you consider that Ottawa won 10, and last year the Thrashers of Atlanta fell well short of 33 wins in their first season in the Southeast. Interesting also the support that this team has gotten within the state of Minnesota. And even watching here, how many people are wearing wild jerseys to be part of that, that first year. So that, that is not just it back in Minnesota, but it's, it's across the U.S. and Canada, and I'm sure in many European countries as well, but since there are so many Europeans, Russians playing on this hockey team. Well, Anaheim came off the momentum of the movie, Mighty Ducks, and their gear was top selling in the National Hockey League in their first season. Right now, the Wild have the top selling merchandise in the National Hockey League. McGinnis crosses the line, but Korea got their first offsides called against the Ducks. Well, the Dodge player who made the difference tonight, the goaltender, Guy A. Bear. And Tom, you talked about it, especially in the first period when he made nine saves on that wild five on three opportunity. Well, that's exactly right. And you watch the action in front, too. And he was just he was just a stalwart. Whenever the puck came that way, he was there. He stopped all but one. 
And even only uh, Gabrick was score, able to score the only goal, but I'll tell you, he has been focused. He talked about coloring his hair, bleaching his hair. Maybe that was going to help, but it certainly has because he has been a very strong player in front of those pipes for the Mighty Ducks in tonight's game. Now it's no different for Craig Hartsburg and the Ducks. If they're going to make the playoffs this year, they failed to make the playoffs one season ago. Guillet Bear is going to have to be much more consistent than he was one year ago. And he has been solid here this evening. And they're one minute and five seconds away from defeating the Wild in the first ever game in franchise history. And it could be the first season opener in franchise history for this team in its eighth season who came into the National Hockey League in 93. Gabrick stepping in, looking shot, save again by Guillet Bear. Capping off a wonderful night, robbing Gabrick on the breakaway. Kuba at the blue line, bouncing puck. And now it is given to Gabrick. Gabrick gets it out. Kuba flipping the puck. Tverdovsky to Solani. And now Tverdovsky tries to get it. The net is empty for the Wild. Extra attacker on. Two man, two goal disadvantage. And a one man advantage with the net clear. Fired down the length of the ice. Touched up by Sekaris, 7.1 seconds remains. Well, Jacques Lemaire says, I want to win this hockey game, and if I have to pull a goaltender, even though we're down by two, I'll do that. And he wants his team to, to get the feel of what it's like to score those goals. They've only scored one here, but this youngster had a very solid game between the pipes for the Minnesota Wild. Jamie McClellan playing in his first NHL game, as he, all these players are, as the Minnesota Wild. Szyzinski with a very strong game also. And we talk about the speed of players like this. Gabbert, we just saw him a few moments ago as he was going across in that great burst of energy that he has. And as you look at number 25, also Sergei Krizokrasov, who has such a depth speed and with that short stick can make those things happen. But you'll get a chance to meet all these players as the games go on during this year. And you'll probably see some more players coming back up from Cleveland who will get some opportunities as well. 75 total shots on goal. The Ducks, Cummins, Cullen, and McGinnis. Their first of the year, Gabrick at 1859 of the second period from Pellerin and Dowd, the first goal scored in wild history. Chusinski can't clear. D.A. Bear spectacular. Anaheim has defeated Minnesota. The final score is 3-1. to one. Well, a great opportunity for this team right now. This was a... Uh, this was a, an emotional game, I think, for the Minnesota Wild coming in here. Certainly not the favorites, but the thing is, they were here, they were respectable, they had chances. Goaltending was the difference in this in this game. They got some very solid uh, goaltending in the likes of Bear for the Mighty Ducks. But tomorrow will be another story. Tomorrow another day, tomorrow another game. A night of first, unfortunately, concludes with the first defeat in Minnesota Wild history. Now for Tom Reed and Eric Nelson, I'm Mike Goldberg saying goodnight from Anaheim, California, where history was made as the Minnesota Wild in their first ever NHL game lose to the Ducks by a final score of 3-1. to one. Be sure to join us tomorrow night from America West Arena in Phoenix, where the Wild will take on the Phoenix Coyotes. Live coverage will begin with the pregame report at 8.30 Central or immediately following Golden Gopher Hockey. You've been watching Minnesota Wild Hockey on Fox Sports Net. Coming up next, the National Sports Report here on Fox Sports Net.